Hi, I'm James Lapine. Hello, I'm Stephen Sondheim. Hi, I'm Bernadette Peters, the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Mandy Patinkin. And this is Sunday no, in the Park I, no, with I'm George. No, I'm Mandy Patinkin. <laughs> no, I'm Mandy Patinkin. Well, I'll start off with the first memory I have. Okay. Which was when James called me up, said that I want to talk to you about a show. Came over to my house on the Upper West Side. I had just finished doing a Vita, and uh, you told me that it was about a painting, that I know this painting. I didn't. I, I said I did. But uh, you finished telling me about it, and that Stephen was going to write the music. And the last thing you said, is, and, and I thought, you know, great, because I, you know, I was excited. I'd, I'd uh, only met Stephen at one of Hal's parties mm. at one time. And I said, great. And then the very last thing you said was, but you have to audition for Steve. And I had just won a Tony Award <laughs> for Avita, and I thought, thank God I'll never have to audition again. <laughs> and I hated auditioning, it was a nightmare, and I remember I just won that, and I panicked right then and there. I panicked, and my face turned white, and uh, I didn't know what to do. That later turned into a phone call to you and to Steve, and whereupon you gave me a talk saying, look, 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 everybody, everybody auditions for me. Don't take it personally. It's no, not like that. Everybody auditions for me except Angela. Angela didn't have to audition for something because she already did two things I knew, but everybody auditioned no matter what, so don't take it personally. And uh, I said, okay, but still terrified. And then I met, I remember at the time I was doing something at Michael Bennett's place. I was working on something, and Michael Sterbin came in uh, as the piano guy uh, to teach me these, this song, Color and Light, which was the only song written at that time. I then had to go in to meet with you, James, Steve, and Paul Gemignani at Playwrights Horizon. I was quite nervous, and uh, then Steve had, uh, because I'd also heard somewhere that you, Steve, hated tenors. No. And that you Let wanted... Me the, Let <laughs> okay, me correct that's what right I heard, though, because I was terrified. No. no, the reason I wanted to audition was I had conceived the part for a bass baritone. A bass. Because I thought that... A guy as repressed as our George would be would be a bass baritone and that Dot uh, w with her energy would be a soprano instead of which I got you as a tenor <laughs> and this bass baritone <laughs> over here named Bernadette Peter <laughs> who sang a low F sharp uh, that, that still uh, that nobody's ever ever matched on the stage but the reason I wanted you to audition was because it sounded it seemed to me wrong Color and Light was not the only song written at the time there were a number of other songs written uh, but Color and Light was the one we gave you to learn just because I could tell, and I could tell after, you know, 40 bars that you would be perfect for the part. But I could not put together in my head the sound of a tenor and that role. And right. that's how that, that's why that happened. Right. It wasn't about auditioning or not auditioning. I knew you could sing. And did he but sing I, the notes you wrote? Yeah, his, he, he learned it. Tenor voice. He learned it. it but well, in, in his natural voice. The audition but, wasn't that painful as I was, as I feared because you you came out and Paul and and you just had me try different things. Yeah, so yeah. you had me go all over the place with it, and that was it. It was sort of just like uh, like see what I could do with the, on the court as a, in a gym court. You probably knew every word. Well, as he, you were prone to do, to know. No, I, I did know the song, the piece he, of he, color he, and light. He, that he, he, he had didn't have to sing the whole song. He learned half of it, and it was it was enough, and it was very clear. It'd be wonderful. And here's our but that was my first memory. Here's our, here's our I bass baritone. Bernadette, <laughs> remember calling Bernadette and asking her to do the show, and she said, "I don't do nude." Oh, you remember that? <laughs> well, yeah, was because was that in the first go? Not the first no, go. It, no, no, it, it was. It was. It was. It was, right it was the first go round because James had outlined a scene that took place at the, uh, in the second act that was based on Le Poseuse, oh, which yeah. is the three and they're all naked. visions of the same naked girl, and Bernadette's. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't do nude. It's one of my. If she ever writes an autobiography, I'm hoping that that will work its way into the title. When you called, when I was in San Francisco, right, we spoke I on the phone. I met Bernadette over the phone. I met you over the phone. You That's called right. me after James had James had snagged you. I said, "How did you get?" I, he said, "I just called her." I thought, "Gee, I wouldn't have the nerve to do that." And so we met on the phone. I was excited. I said, "Yes, of course." <laughs> she, she did. It was uh, that was an exciting thing. I mean, you know, that month. I remember the workshop, that very first reading, uh, when, when I met you, Bernadette, and, yeah. and we read it, and I just thought the whole thing took off right there. Yeah. I had never worked off Broadway before. I'd only worked on Broadway, so that was my first experience 
working. And of course, it's once you've done it, you want to do it all the time because it really felt like people putting on a show for love instead of for money, and yeah. uh, that still exists. The idea of just getting in a room and just putting on the show, and if it goes, it goes, and if it doesn't, it doesn't. It's boy, what a privilege! Yeah, what a privilege. But off Broadway was different than it is today. I know. Now I know. it's just. I would. I, I'd say I learned my greatest lessons from that whole experience because I. Um, I, ha I had worked Broadway. off Broadway, et cetera, but what I hadn't ever learned up to that point was the idea of the workshop mm -hmm. and that part of the process and, and the idea of people coming to see something that wasn't finished yeah. terrified me. I would go crazy uh, if, if what I needed to do hadn't been written yet or wasn't formed. Sure. And it was, a it was a period where I really learned the lesson that I've used for my whole life mm -hmm. that if it isn't ready, it isn't ready till well, it's ready. One of the re I'm, uh, one of the reasons I'm I always have a couple of songs left to write in those circumstances it has to do not just with my own procrastination, but with the fact that you get to know not just the characters but the characters as played by those actors. Shakespeare and people like that had such such an advantage because they wrote for a specific group of people. And I remember how easy it was to write, for example, Sweeney Todd. Once I knew that Angie was playing. Uh, playing that part, and that Len Carey was playing uh, Sweeney, because and I, I learned my lesson actually we were writing uh, for Ethel Merman and Gypsy because we weren't writing for Mama Rose, we were writing for Mama Rose as played by Ethel Merman, and once you do that, boy, it makes writing easier. I well, once said as a joke, but that I don't you, want to write a note until the show's cast. But how do you feel in terms of, of its longevity, where other people would play if it, it because if that you, aren't Ethel Merman? Uh, that, because the fun of it is, it's like uh, whoever Shakespeare wrote Hamlet for. There have been 5,000 Hamlets ever since. Right, the right, fun, right. If the part is rich, it only is rich from generation to generation. The great thing that, that keeps good plays alive is the fact that they can be done by actor after actor after actor. And that's, you know, and I believe uh, in writing that way. Uh, that you, if you can write it for somebody specific, it will become universal. Right. As long as the character is specific. Not to embarrass you, but I have often, you know, people talk about you and they'll ask me about you and everything, and I'll often compare your writing to Shakespeare, and I compare it in terms of its simplicity and, and an unconsciousness that I feel takes place, because I think if Shakespeare or you were conscious of the meanings and various levels that take place in your writing, that no one would ever be able to talk to either one of you. And, and so I think there is certain unconsciousness. One that I'll never forget that happened to me in this piece, it was on a Thursday night right before the very last performance, the week of the very last mm -hmm. run uh, where I did the last performance, and I was eating at a place called uh, the Black Sheep on Amsterdam uh, in New York, and a waiter came up to me and he said, you know that song, When You're With Your Mother? He said, and you sing that song about uh, uh, I, I see towers instead of trees. He said to me, are you, are you saying icy towers, <laughs> I, I see why, or are you saying I see, S-E-E? -E? Oh, I said, that's very easy. I said, because James and everybody, we all talked, and the, and the idea of looking and seeing was an image that we repeated all the time, idea of what you look and you see. And I said, so it's, it's I see, S-E-E, -E. and I get out there that night, and all I could see while I was singing <laughs> so that song was a snow-covered uh, Eiffel Tower. Of course, and then, of you know, course. And, and, and it is... <laughs> you know, it is what's so thrilling about, you know, all your stuff that I, I get to do, uh, not just from this show, but other things, is, is just when you think you know what it means, it means something else. The most amazing experience I ever had with this piece was ten years after we did it, when we did the revival concert <laughs> yeah. at, uh, for, for the charity. And it was amazing because I had such memories, such vivid memories of, of the images and the meanings that this piece meant to me. Mm. And ten years later, I couldn't get over what it meant now, that it was like a whole other play, almost simpler and mm. richer, and, and, and I thought some of it very painful. And I mm. thought, what's, what's the result of that is to not have had the experience with, with to, be have, to be dead, and not have had the life up to that time, because I couldn't get over that it could mean one, some, one thing ten years ago, and ten years later, have a completely different reflection in my mind. I was, uh, the, one of the points I wanted to make, because it may work later, is that the two songs that came in at the end, 
though they may have seemed to you very late in coming in, were actually, once I'd gotten the ideas for them, very easy to write because I was writing for Bernadette as Dot and you as George, as opposed to writing for Dot and George. So I knew exactly the quality once I knew what the songs had to be about. Which were Color and Light and yeah. Lesson Number 8. Uh, no, we're not Color and Light. No. But I mean, I children, mean and children and Art children Lesson Number 8. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, all your songs sound the same. James, what do you think? <laughs> I'm watching the show. I'm He's, watching. Yeah. He's in uh, I'm looking Italian at these costumes Shannon. thinking the costumes are pretty great. Yeah. yeah. Really were great. It might, might be good for people to know how the show started, which was James and I wanted to write a show together. And Look, uh, I don't have a bald spot there. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's good to look at it just for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually amazed at how well that dress look that opens up and closes. Remember the first time we oh, did it, yes. it was like a big cage? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and Bran yeah. Farron was the one who designed that mechanism, right? The mechanism, who now yeah. does all the things for Disney. Uh, didn't it start out different? Well, there was something, that, that was the second, wasn't there another dress first that didn't work? Of, uh, was something Without the well, in the workshop we had a non-mechanized dress that Bernadette had oh. to basically trundle on and then trundle up. But this one is very The difficulty impressive. wasn't, Bernadette, wasn't the difficulty to step out of the dress without knocking it over? Wasn't that the problem, as I remember? Yes. You always see, you just generally think, because every now and then it would... But I had to wait till the little legs came down. Yeah. <laughs> My memory of the dress is that it had a remote control device that they right. operated from off stage. But if it didn't work, either to open or a, close. I had a switch in front. You had a switch sure. to override switch. it. it was an opening and a closing switch. Right. And it happened a couple times, but it in. never was. Yeah, but I also remember, <laughs> yeah. I also I remember falling, yeah. falling It was a very short evening. Yes, yes because I had to. <laughs> I had to. It opened, and then the legs had to come down. So I had to wait. I had to wait for it to open, and then I had to wait for the legs to come down, and then I got out of it. So yeah. I had to wait for those all those uh, beats. I remember Steve writing this number saying, "Well, we this show so arty, I better write a really proud." Please no, it was from the monologue. Was from the monologue. From the monologue. Do you remember your opening your opening line in the monologue? A dribble of sweat. What what did you actually sing? A something of something else of sweat. Was it a a, no. a trickle? A trickle. trickle. I trained changed dribble to trickle. I remember that's what started. But you wrote this as a, a lot of this as a monologue. Yeah, but you had written. Follow, but the notion of following the sweat down the back just right. was dazzling. No, but you wrote the song as being a sort of tour de force. Of yeah, well, you know, you had, it had to, it had to yeah. uh, and also, but it was also to, to make Dot, to show, as we say, all the facets. The, 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 the lucky part of the song was I was able to use so much of the musical material for later. It really is, a, it's really the fountain from which most of the score springs. When you said earlier, Steve, that you had many songs written other than Color and Light, well, you I had many I songs have said for the many. characters in the painting. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, and, and, uh, and also for Dot. What but I, I think it's very interesting to explain that, well, that, that my memory was that you did indeed write the, the characters in the painting first rather than what the artist painted. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I think, no, I, I know that I'm almost certain that the first song I wrote was the, was the opening for Dot. I usually start at the beginning of a show. And I, I know that the first music I wrote were the opening chords and because I knew I wanted to build from them. But I think the first song I wrote was Dot, and I think the second song I wrote was Color and Light, oh, because right. I, wanted to, I wanted to nail the two characters. Mm. So but, but it, may, it may be that I'd only written those two, but I think I'd written more than that. After that, I started filling in with the other people. I like to write in order. Well, what, what always seemed to make sense to me in hindsight what, was that it seemed to me that after those couple of things that you then wrote the painting, because how would you write what the artist would, s would think well, or say until he knew what he was what's, reflecting what, on. What's interesting about the painting, as you well know for having to do it every night, is that James and I went to the Chicago Art Institute and spent a couple of days in front of the painting. And of course, they're not dots at all. Uh, Surratt painted in little blobs of color. So that, in fact, the rhythm of his, of his arm must have been much slower than what I wrote for you and what you had to do every night. Because he never went bop, 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 because they're not dots, they're blobs. And he must have gone blob, blob. <laughs> Blob. Right. I thought I can't do this. It'd be the world's longest song. <laughs> red, 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 orange. I mean, you know, so, so I had to cheat on that.
What was oh. the deal with this thing when the oh, boat the, song? Because at one time, wasn't the, there another the, the, one? Yeah, there was, was called yeah, be? yeah, Yuhu. There was a song called Yuhu there because you could see you could see the uh, the yeah, pervert see, in the front, yeah. and he and he was singing. Oh my goodness, my goodness! I've seen these faces. It's, it's funny how teeny the stage looks to me now. Doesn't it? Doesn't it? But also how so. how absolutely life sized the the painting looks. Painting's but, got, but, that but, painting's coming to Toronto now. But when you say Yuhu was a song the of the that wasn't there something? Chris Gronendahl sang Yuhu. He was the pervert, and he sang. I remember there was a song you know, to, to across the bank, and then and everybody on the bank responded badly. It was a, it was it was a pervert song, and that Who's was the, the pervert. The guy Chris, with the Chris, with, no, no, with the white it? with the white coats. <laughs> you were you were changing clothes backstage. You never saw this. <laughs> never right. saw this scene. No, I think I was standing there and I see him over. I'm over there. Off, oh, yeah. off to the side. Oh. Yeah. Well, you didn't see him. The dog. <laughs> it's sort of fun seeing without sound. Okay, name the guy on the left and win a trip. <laughs> I know. Charlie what Kimbrough. famous it's, show? But what it's, famous show? It's interesting. It's yeah. interesting that both Charlie Kimbrough and Brent Spiner are in this production, and Absolutely. they both became huge uh, TV stars. Mm -hmm. Charlie suddenly looks like uh, C. Aubrey Smith to me. Yes. The, the, the British actor. Who was he? Oh, he was the British actor who played all of the stiff-necked colonels in the mm. movies of the '30s. It's really fun to see them without here. Uh -huh. yeah. That works so <laughs> yeah, that's great. Fun. That works it's fun. So great. It's nice not to have seen this a long time. It's full of little surprises. I think I think Jim's notion of of breaking time that way, of suddenly you know bringing in that canvas and taking it out. I, I think one of my one of my very favorite moments in the show. Well, actually the op the whole opening when the stage starts to when the white disappears and it starts to become colored but then when when georgia races the tree and it goes up in the air mm -hmm. i thought boy does an audience now know what kind of a show they're in for mm -hmm. and i remember there was always kind of a delighted gasp from the audience they didn't quite they thought at first it was a mistake you know they thought oh there's something wrong with you and then they right. got it right. because they watched mandy racing and they got it that was fun at playwrights first time we did it mm. So well, remember, yeah, no one happened it because was, there's no no uh, fly space. What did you do? We tracked it off. Oh, yeah. James took me to the New York Students Students Art League uh, for several lessons. We uh, the very oh, first right, time, yeah. and we went over there on 57th Street to sketch to practice sketching. And I never drew. And the most fun, one of the fun you things learned. I had is. I, I by the time the show, by the time you, you left could, the show, you were they, an they're you not were I have many of these pads and have kept several yeah, of them. And yeah. uh, I still have one you gave me. And it's see, I drew that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's not so horrible. No, that's, it's no, it's very right. I, I used to take pride being just like my father, saying the only thing I can draw is a box. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so this was a big breakthrough for me. No, that no, that's very impressive. I, I love that. He must have said something pleasing. <laughs> no, you look smug. You look like you're just invited. I probably said I couldn't make another engagement. <laughs> Going to the Follies. Going tonight. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that, no, that's what it was. That was the problem. It was never there. No, no, they no, said, we're going to the Follies. Tonight. Barbara Brin. Barbara looks so great. Oh, she, doesn't she photograph beautifully? She's so oh, great. So long. Judith. What made you decide to make the, the mother have start to get? Well, I mean, it makes it so wonderful. Oh, one, of, one, one of the, oh, I know what I wanted to say was uh, James took me down to a painter studio, which I'd never been to before, and also, and of course, it was a guy who did completely abstract Jackson Pollocky art, and we'd watch him stand yeah. there, and he'd think, and then he put a red blob on a canvas that looked like a kid had spilled paint on it. Right. I thought, how did he make that decision? I don't even know what the, what the yeah. decision was. Oh, right, it was Joe, Joe Centauri. Yeah, he's really come into his own as an artist. You know, it's weird looking at this as I realize the mother in this is, is slightly senile. That's what I was about to say. I what know. made you make her that? Well, well it's so it's weird with my own mother. I going. know. But uh, what's a, what, well, one of the one of the most exciting things happened was after after James and I had uh, gotten the idea was you know James had worked with the painting before and we decided to do it and b wondered why nobody in the painting was looking at anybody else and it suggested a farce and suggested a stage set and then James said that the main character was missing from the painting I said who and he said the the painter 
and that was sort of what clicked it into place. And two days later, he came back to the apartment with uh, a sketch of, of the painting with, a, with an overlay of a piece of tissue paper on it, and he just pointed arrows to the seven major characters in the front and said, mother and nurse, and etc. 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 And he had he had made all these characters up. There are people who really think that's who those characters are. Mm. People think that's really a boatman. He may be. He may be a jockey. Yeah, the yeah, other yeah. thing is, I, I I read a poem, who uh, oh, a well known American poet, uh, Randall Jarrell, I think, and he wrote a poem about this painting in which he refers to the old man under the tree. Um, because if you look at it, you don't know whether that's a man yeah. or a woman. Mm -hmm. And James chose it to be the mother. But it may very well be a man. My favorite photograph of, that I'd ever seen of the whole experience was a shot that James took with his little camera of you, Steve, oh. looking at the painting in Chicago. Yeah, I don't. Do you have a copy of that, James? That p picture somewhere. I think did that it, not I, survive I, the no, fire? It got well, burnt in the oh, fire. it did. Yeah. But somewhere that's why um, yeah. when we did the album shoot, I asked if they could just shoot me from my back, yeah. oh, I, I, looking I, at the painting. picture of you, and that was me well, trying to copy yeah, that photo. Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought, what a coincidence! No, no, no. <laughs> I was, I was so inspired by oh, that photo. That, oh, that my, photo was the oh, whole painting, oh, the whole boy. piece. To oh, me. another thing that do, do you, do you, do you, uh, Manny Burnett, do you know about James going to the Isle of the Grand Jean and taking photographs there, and he came back? Well, and they're at the end of this concrete thing, you, and they're fishing it. with parasols above their head because it was about to rain. Oh my God! But it's all concrete. But it's exactly what the painting is. Did you take yeah. a picture, too? Yes, did well, you? Well, you made a video of it, right? You remember we saw that video? Was that you or did somebody No, somebody else that? went and did that. That was a friend that. of mine did that. Yeah. Took, took a the video. Grave the whole, that's right, and yeah, grave stone. That's right, yeah, grave And, uh, and the fact that uh, 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 Surratt is buried next to a man named Lapine. Lapine, L right. L A P I N E. Wow. Yes, I remember that. That was small quite, world, isn't quite it? an image. But this is my favorite number, I think, of any show we've worked together on. Yeah. This is my absolute favorite number. A combination of it's just great, he says modestly. But no, it, no, it's true. Well, you know, it's one. No, one of the pleasures of this number is how dialogue and song blend into each other. We well, just have how two so worlds much is suggested, collide. Yeah. How much is suggested by the painter and by the by the model? I, I think what would be interesting is if we don't forget to talk about things that where James would write certain paragraphs mm -hmm. that eventually became songs, mm -hmm. and other things that we expected to become songs that <laughs> didn't because <laughs> they didn't need to yeah. because. And but there was a whole discussion that, uh, that I, I don't know what the final. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody should know we're laughing at Bernadette that we hear Charles. The Follies. The Follies number. It looks like an, it's a, an old big panties commercial. Everybody should, watch, everybody, everybody should watch this part of the number without any sound. You know that you know that old exercise equipment where they would have those big leather belts that they put around. It, right. it looks like those. Wow. I'm proud of her. Look at that hair. Wow. I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who are not in the room and cannot see Bernadette, she still has uh, her hair exactly like that. As opposed to I, some of the rest of us. As opposed to the rest of us have changed our hairstyle. You know, one of, my, one, of my, one of my favorite moments in this number is when Bernadette says George has many secrets and she dabs the powder on with a little anger. It's just, it's, it's wonderful. Mm. One of the reasons this worked so well is because just in the theater, it just was one of those great things. You were able to keep all your your eyesight could hold the whole image. Well, that was what was wonderful about doing a Playwrights Horizons, where the proscenium arch was virtually the size of the painting. Right. So that when yeah. Mandy was painting this, it was absolutely in proportion to Mandy. I remember you guys said you went to the Chicago Art Institute, where the actual painting is. I went there twice: once before the workshop and once before we went back into rehearsal for Broadway. The second time I stayed there quite some time because we were gonna we were embarking on the second act and I had the similar experience with the people coming in and talking yeah, and chatting yeah, about yeah. the painting. And then I had a little tiny prayer that I remembered saying right before I left. As I looked at this work and I realized that we were about to go on and do it for a larger audience than probably Surratt had ever mm, I know. had so, seen wow. his own work. And I said a little prayer saying that I hoped we did justice to your work and When James it was extraordinary. I mean, it was an amazing feeling that I had. Uh, the irony that well, here we were, a hundred years later, going to do this, and so many people would see it, 
and his painting never got seen by more than a few people over a Coke stand. Well, when he was alive. Orange, yeah. orange. When he was alive. Orange now orange it's been, didn't have Coke back. Now it's well, on there. I have more images. I have an umbrella stand. Orange. I have a coffee yeah. jar. I have every, you know, yeah. this painting has been completely commercialized oh, I know, I know. into every form. <laughs> right. You have a puzzle. I can't tell you how many J artifacts James I have. and I, one of, the, one of the reasons we stood in front of the painting as long as we did was James originally had thought of the whole middle part of the second act not as being a fundraiser, which it is now, but as just people meeting in the museum and having different relationships as people oh. do in a museum. Mm -hmm. and so couples meeting on an assignation or somebody alone, whatever it was. And so we wanted to overhear things that people said. And one of the first things we heard was a woman comes in and says, I thought it looked a lot better in the other hall that she went out. <laughs> and another person came in and said, it's all made of little dots. <laughs> I can't believe them. There was a wonderful uh, a documentary that was shown on Arts and Entertainment, which is, uh, talked about you know how how Surat had got a number of his ideas from the carpet factory. What is that place in in France that made the carpets? And the way it showed it was uh, it had a, a, a very a, a close up of threads in a carpet, and you saw a red thread and a blue thread mm. and a yellow thread, and the camera started to pull back, and now you saw a green thread. Now the green and the blue started to blend, and the yellow it, suddenly a foot away became a rose. Mm. But it started by seeing a yellow thread and a red line and a mm. blue line. You saw nothing but the lines, and then mm -hmm. as it pulled back, and that's of course exactly what Surat did, which is have the eye mix the color. Mm -hmm. and so you know, if you look closely at the carpet, it's just threads. This way, this is just dots. Oh, you look beautiful, Bernadette. You look good too, Mandy. <laughs> what was the, what was also the story? I forget, but he repainted the painting over. Uh, 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 spent another year. Painting James, over. James, I, 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 ten, I tend to answer that slightly inaccurately, James. Gee, will tell it's you. only been 15 years. I, don't know. Well, I think he, it took him he, two years to paint this no, painting. When he I'm first sure. painted it, he painted it in his so called old style. And apparently, Pizarro said to him, Why don't you use the style you were experimenting with on the, uh, with the, uh, the, uh, the Bathers uh, uh, painting, which was the one that you see here earlier, uh, which had to do with short strokes? And he said, Oh, really? So apparently, he painted over the painting using this technique that Mandy is now using, uh -huh. uh, and that so it's really a transitional painting. Between and after this painting, then he went full blown into mm. into pointillism. On the other hand, he had painted some seascapes before this, had he not, also in the pointillistic style. So Pizarro was urging him to use use that technique for this big painting. Have they ever X-rayed the um, the original to see I if there was it. anything? I don't know. Yeah, I think they actually have. I don't remember anymore. But As a matter of fact, yes, why would they have printed such a thing? There aren't that many books written about Surat because he was such, he lived such a short life and he was so secretive. But we read virtually everything. And, uh, uh, and so the facts seem to be the facts. So the Bathers was done before this? Yeah. Yeah, the Bathers. Yeah, the Bathers. And, and that wasn't done in the That was the first of the seven. No. That has some pointillistic some, some sections of it. Yeah. Some passages. Mm -hmm. But a lot of it is just paint. Painting type painting, regular type painting. I saw that picture in, um, it's in, in London. London, yeah. right. The National Gallery. And you know what else is in London is the one of yeah. La Pedruz. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that one too. Yeah. It's yeah. in the a gallery. little gallery, yeah. Yeah. yeah, a really teeny little gallery. The My favorite one though is the, is the, the, you know, they're is the all pencil coming sketch. To My favorite one yeah. is the pencil sketch, uh, the crayon the sketch of the little girl, which oh. is at the Guggenheim. Oh. Fabulous. Right here. It's it's one fabulous. Of, yeah, fabulous. I just love it. Because there's nothing on the paper. It's just an outline, and it's, the girl's all in but white. You, but you know, his, that whole thing of his using Conte crayon and just the pressure of the soft crayon on the porous paper, you know, which is, oh. and, and he creates light and shadow by just just uh, uh, easing the pen, pencil off the paper and right. making it a little darker mm. and all that. You study his drawings there. I mean, much as I love his paintings, his drawings, oh, I his rarely drawings. have cried in front of visual art, but I, I saw it. I saw the actual drawing of his mother and um, and of his friend, the, the artist whose last name begins with an A, and I, I started to cry. But, but what's so extraordinary is, is there's so little on the page, and so almost he's almost drawing what isn't there. Oh, it, that, but that's it. That's it. Literally, if you look at, at those drawings, it, it is. It's the white paper makes yeah. goes into your eye, and you say that's that's a whatever it is mm. a table, but it isn't. It's what's left out. Because I, I sat with Hirschfeld once at some event, and he was talking to me about drawing. It was right after this or during it. And he was talking about drawing, and he was saying that he, his work has been to make the, the simplest line say the most. And then when I, soon after that, I went to see 
these uh, Conti Cran drawings of Seurat, and I thought, not only simple as line, there are no lines. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, no, it's not. It's, it does all with the pressure of a very soft yeah. crayon, on, and the paper is not like regular paper. It's, li it's, like, it's like a pot marks in it. Charlie very was coarse. great here. Oh, yeah. Bill Perry, and when he sang the Bowman song, oh, I just yeah. loved it. Yeah. Melanie. Melanie and Mary. <laughs> that, Mary that was originally Mary Elizabeth F. Master Antonio. Oh, yeah. That's mm -hmm. right, at the playwrights. A lot of s stars have come out of these <laughs> two productions. James has an eye for casting. Yeah. yeah. And for other things, too. <laughs> the dog. Well, it's not the dog song yet. I want to tell the story about the dog song. Because when I wrote the song for the dog, I thought I had just seen a Laurie Anderson concert where she used something called a vocoder, which is a, looks like a large microphone, a tubular microphone, in which you, it talks, you talk into it and distorts your voice. And I thought, and I f went to a, a Manny's, I think, or Sam Ash, anyway, uh, a music store. Do you want to give the phone number? <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, we experimented with it, and they, they said, yeah, we can make it sound like a dog. I thought, great. And Mandy said, I don't want to use that. I'll do the dog. And we thought, oh, well, you know, Mandy, we'll <laughs> indulge Mandy. <laughs> and he came in, and he auditioned three separate dogs for each of the dogs. Aww. Three separate voices. We had six <laughs> voices to choose from, three for the little one and three for the big one. I went, I c couldn't believe it. And everyone was an entirely different characterization. Well, what I was wish. Was casting dogs, what but I all in Mandy's voice. Come on. I would give anything to have that moment on tape where James and you and Gemignani and I were in that room oh. having a very adult conversation, as serious as could be, about the nature of these voices with you saying things like, that one's okay, but it's a little bit too much Hermione. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds it was like just, it. it was like the most sophisticated conversation about these voices for this dog, and it was hilarious. This was the big change, of course, from the playwrights. And we had John Guare to think. John Guare. What's that? Like the Red Book. Because uh, Bernadette said to James and me that she felt the dot disappeared from the story after the painting sequence until halfway through the first act. And John Guare said, why can't she be in the park learning to read? And James picked up on that. And as you know, the Red Book then becomes mm. the spine of the entire <laughs> play. Mm. But it was not their playwrights horizons. Mm. Remember well, when either we, we saw you, we saw you in Atlantic there. City, yeah. and you said, I just wish that, that Dot yes. would come somewhere. Be and I was talking to Guare, and he said, have her learn to read. That's a great idea. And then James That's took, took idea. the ball and ran down the field. Yeah. Because when that red book turns up at the end of the play, man. Yep. It's pretty heavy. Well, that's lesson number eight. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to me, my favorite song, I know everyone thinks the brilliance of finishing the hat and all, all, all the other things, but... The song Lesson Number Eight yeah. to me is just it. Lesson Number Eight is great, and Children and Artists. I, I, I think it's great to me because of what it oh, means. Oh no! It's all, it's but piece. also, it, it is resonant for the rest of the. The nice uh, one, you know, we're all talking about how wonderful the show is. One of the things that I love about the show is the resonance, how everything relates to something else, and as the play goes on, it accumulates, and people say things. You say that sounds like that. Incidentally, the, the, I had a I, I had a pun title for that song. I didn't call it Lesson Number Eight. I called it Primer, P R I M E R because that's what a book is, but also a primer is what you do to a canvas. canvas. Mm. And I thought, wouldn't that be clever? And I thought, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> it would be clever. You know what I just realized? Mm. That, um, well, Fifi was the girl's dog's name. Mm -hmm. What's the guy dog's name? Spot. Ooh. Spot. I have, I, I have two black labs now. I guess. Oh, I, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess unconsciously it, uh, Got in. Better get a Pomeranian quick. <laughs> Close ups are wonderful without. Look, you can tell what everybody. Is, this is called acting. Everybody is absolutely characterizing without hearing a single sound. Uh, those of us commenting here. Man, you have this wonderful look of there, being there but not being there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So great for that. I never, I, the, the, when Mandy shrinks from the boatman's uh, violence, was always a surprise to me. I thought, George. I can be afraid. 
Well, I thought he was very much afraid of a number of things. And but I never thought of his being physically himself afraid of in that but, path. But you're right, and you're absolutely right, uh, but I hadn't realized it. The key it. to it being the relationship with this wonderful woman that he couldn't yeah. commit to. Yeah. And that's why it's interesting that the mother was, was, was getting senile. And he says, connect, George, connect yeah. all the time. And she's getting further and further right. away mm. from you. Right, right. Barbara's quality of querulousness and craziness was so wonderful. Mm -hmm. You know the tree and the image of a tree. Somebody said something to me once. It was while I was actually seeing um, the production of Carmen mm -hmm. um, with the white carpet at Lincoln Center. Not Carmen, mm -hmm. Cherry Orchard. Oh. And these two actresses were having this huge scene downstairs. Marilyn, um, who, who was the, what's her name? Mary Beth Hurt. No, 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 the, uh, the other actress. Of, oh, I can't remember her name. But they were having this huge, two huge Sounds actresses like. downstairs. And upstage... A little child in that production was dressed in a little coat, a little old person's coat, and crossed the stage, way upstage at the Vivian Beaumont. And it made me realize then that this whole scene can go on, but that sometimes it's another image that's going on, which then took me to a different place as I'm looking at these trees. And it made me realize that in, in the way that one wants to get pressure off themselves and thinking that they're not the most important thing, which is something I could do to my grave, but uh, someone could go to this painting in the museum and look at it, and all the people in it would have no effect on them. Mm -hmm. But what would unleash their emotions could be a certain tree way in the background that was the tree in the yard that they grew up in, that something happened with their parents. And you never mm -hmm. know whether it's a piece of music but or that, a note that, that, that sounds like all. a doorbell. That's or, true of or, all, or, art. all art. Mm -hmm. and, and so it's... Uh, One of the qualities of standing in front of this painting is that you get mesmerized by the stillness of it. It's been written about, but it does have a magical quality. It just, everything becomes hushed and still. It's just remarkable. Well, this was so great because this song really won the audience over to the character, mm -hmm. you know, gave him mm -hmm. a sense of humor because he was a rather humorless character. So, mm -hmm. Also, I didn't, I, of course, I wanted to blend into the day off, and James said, you got to give Mandy a hand after he's worked that no, hard. No, I didn't say that. It was Michael Bennett. Michael okay. Bennett. No, no, wait, I always fix the two of you up. I always fix the two of you up. the beard. And, it's the beard. And, but, and Stephen, right. we had this discussion, which I've had in it's various true. ways with other people for the rest of my life, whereas you would say when a button is necessary yeah, right. and when it's not necessary. And I I don't remember it anymore whether I wanted the button here yeah. or well, not. It was never from you. But I remember that. It was never from you. It was from, no, it, he's right. It was Michael. Michael saw it and said, you got to get Mandy. But out. Mandy didn't want it, and I didn't I want know, it. I know, yeah, I didn't want it. I all, I'm always one who just loves it to keep yeah. moving. Also, that's the kind of show that James and I like to write, our, our, where the songs mm. blend in and out. We finally got to it in passion, not a single hand through right. the whole thing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and I have to say, in retrospect, I think it probably killed us, but nevertheless. That's what I wanted. I know. Well, we did it. was a hint of a hand, I but said. But that's what oh. Michael said. Michael said, you know, there are times and you got to let the audience just because the thing about a hand that I learned is it just lets them relax. And yes, no, it's true. I understand. No, it's a release of energy. Their nose and get no, it's their a release candy. of energy. It's terrific. But I think, well, I think there are times. Well, it helped the yeah. show enormously when we got to this number and put yeah. a hand in. It was really such a small I, I think, contribution, you know, I, but it was a big one. I on think his the part. way, as long as somehow you design it, that it, it has to do with the energy I think that it's played in and conducted in that you're never begging for that hand, no. that if it's not there, it moves directly. So it almost seems like the hand is just in, you know, it's somehow just creaked in a crack. But one of the problems with this show is that the opening number that Bernadette sings and the way she sang it was quite spectacular. And though it didn't stop the show because no opening number or very, or no solo opening number does that anyway. Uh, nevertheless, it led the audience to believe that that was the kind of evening it was going to be that it would have these little pieces of fantasy in it, like her stepping out of the dress or the tree disappearing, but that there were going to be number numbers, and in fact, there were very few. But you guys always were watching a show. Doing it, we have a completely different experience sure. doing it. It's a whole other world. Do, do you feel that um, the nature of this piece was one that became predictable in terms of how the audience reacted, or that one never knew what was going to happen? No, next, I, I don't think they, but the no, I, I was always aware that the audience were baffled. 
because it is, it is as they say, non-linear and non-realistic. I never understood why people thought this thing was so weird. I still, except well, I watched James, it, you know, I called you, you know, well, what, what a few weird? months ago it was on TV sure. and I sat down and I watched it and then I thought, boy, is this a weird but, show. See, now that happened to me. When I came in, not having seen the show in about three months, and I stood in the back and I thought, this is the weirdest, where's the story? What's going on here? What's that dream? I saw it through the eyes of the audience that was, uh, an audience that was baffled. And I, because up until then, like James, I thought, what are they baffled by? What are well, they what's so by? new about it? Yeah. But you think what's so new about it, and then you see it suddenly through the eyes of, of strangers. And uh, uh, so, what are you guys saying that that you felt that it was baffling in the end? Or oh, that you I felt that it's a, it's a very weird show. It's a it's very just weird odd. show. It's, it's an odd, odd show. There's no, there's never been a show like it. Well, then in what terms do you? Of, but but some people think it's just extraordinary. No, but, no, but what? No, but oh, what do you no, say not, to those folks? No, I'm not talking about good well, or bad. It's not a bad. It's not about good or bad. No, I don't mean good or bad. It's just. Some people can get into theatrical fantasy and, and whatever non-realistic thing you throw at them, and some can't. Look, Let's take a you, moment hey, to look at my oh, artwork. Yeah, I'm no, very, no, I like no. take a bow. So. <laughs> and just when the audience thinks they got it in yeah. the first act, you, you, right. yeah, the you second get, act, yeah, they say, we're well, asking them now right. to And as you know, there, there were different. a number of critical reactions that said, well, the first act is swell, but that second act, what is that doing there? It's because they couldn't take the jump. That's right. And yet, I, th I think that jump is one of the best moments in the show, yeah. when the characters disappear one by one, and one by one. Well, now this is weird. The cutout with the real guy. I must have was, definitely he, smoked now the joint. This is the, this the part Kelsey this. Grammer played in the yeah. workshop. Well, remember the original one was it was actually attached to his body and it right. couldn't work. It was actually attached. Yes, I remember, he, that, he I remember that. Couldn't 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 work work. But back to the, I'm interested when you say uh, the audience. Some audience is being baffled and others being able to get into it. Uh, so, I should say some people in the audience being baffled. Oh, some individual. I mean, do, sure. do you think? Do you think? Did those, never anybody ever come to you, Manny, and say uh, oh, oh, they didn't understand lost. it? Absolutely. Yeah. But others came and said. Do you think uh, those that didn't understand were lazy, less intelligent? No, no, uh, what, no. What do you no. think? It's Our fault. Un unwillingness to go with something non-realistic. It's just people, particularly today, are, are brought up so much on realistic media, and uh, but also you have to suspend disbelief. And, and some people can do that more easily than others. Now some people this, need a plot. Yeah. We have the same reaction with Company, which was the first commercial plotless musical. Mm -hmm. I mean, outside of reviews, but Company's halfway between. Audience, some audience just couldn't get with it because they kept waiting for the story. Yes. And then the curtain came down, and there was no story. Right. Same thing happened with Follies. I know it's one of the reasons that that uh, Follies did, was was more successful is they kept waiting for the story. I'd love someday to see okay. those. Remember all those the longer yeah, songs no, that we right. had here. Yes, that I were, do. What were those? Yeah. Until you made me cut them. Yeah, I know. What were they? Well, oh, they, were, they, were, they were really long. They were more well, songs. Each 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 of these sections was about twice or three times as long. You may not remember, but in the Playwrights Horizons version, uh, each of those was much longer. And what happened was, and it was a good reason, we realized that the audience was mildly interested in the. Uh, peripheral characters. What they really were interested in is George and Dot. And the more we s time we spent away from George and Dot, the more their, attended, uh, their attention was, I won't say wandering, but less intense. Well, and it was so, shapeless. It was and so what we did was we cut this whole, all these songs down to about 8, 16, and maybe 20 bars, whereas f formerly they had been a minute, a minute and a half. But, but in a funny way, I think you could put them back now, now that the show... Yeah, was that thing when once it was shaped yep. and the other songs were written for the other characters? Yep, yep. It's, yeah, you could it's probably it. put it back. Remember, now. the soldier had a whole song called "Soldiers and Girls," a whole long song mm -hmm. um, that Kelsey sang, and, um, and that was Brent Spiner. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's Mandy particularly. Mm -hmm. I remember the first time seeing Mandy with a. I thought Mandy, well, he'll never look like Sir. I know. It came out with a beard. I, I absolutely. On your first costume call, and you sat down and you were with your easel on stage left, and I thought, it's Surat. It's just him. <laughs> There's only one drawing of Surat. Well, the company gave me this beautiful box when the show was over, and inside was a picture uh, over at the easel in the beginning in the first scene with Bernadette and myself. And then the other two pictures in the lid were the real Surat and a shot of me that oh, matched it great. in sepia tone. Oh. And I have it oh, right on my mantle, and I can never get over it to my myself. That's fabulous. You know, it's a very fabulous. eerie thing. I got chills just even yeah. saying it. Mm -hmm. You know, I am reminded once again when I stood in front of the painting. I wish, I, I hope we do okay for you, yeah, sir. No, no. And and how how it can be that we can look like somebody. And you know, what was interesting though when you think about it was you know what resistance we had to the reception of the show. Sort of ironic compared to what resistance he had. 
to his own work. Mm. I remember those previews on Broadway where it was... Well, part of that Jan, is Jan, just Jan, the, 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 the vultures out at the, the beginning no, of Broadway. The look, the look on James's face at the first walkout at the Booth Theater was something I'll never forget. He had never seen anybody walk out because they don't walk out off Broadway. Was that, though, before... The theaters are too small. They don't walk out. Was that before uh, Lesson Number 8 Children? Oh, yeah, and our, the first preview. Well, that was a big thing. We should talk the, about that yeah, for a minute. Also, though. remember the first preview we had. We had, yes. we had a big kerfuffle in the second act with the... With the, with the uh, On Broadway, the, 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 the show. About. Yeah, right. Well, there's a big difference. We should just go... You know, how many performances did we, we do? Did, we did a month, and the last three performances included a sketch of the second act, and the which sketch had only two included. songs. Yeah. Two songs, It's Hot Up Here, and something called Gotta Keep Them Humming. Right, that ju just let you know that we took the right. joke. And the rest of it, James, and also at underscoring and... and at Playwrights, did we, did, we, uh, did we show the fact that the painting came back into George's life, that all the characters came back? Yeah, did we, we at went the end, you far, had right? that, didn't we you, did James? That for the I, I know you changed it yes, Broadway, we did but do there it, was yeah, something. But that something. was only done at the last three performances, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it's just important to note that when we did it, my recollection was that when we did it at Playwrights, as it grew, people were overwhelmed by that first act, yeah. and it was extraordinary. Mm -hmm. And it was a, almost a complete thing in itself. Right, and we'd run it that way. And for, we'd run for it the that way. And then the, the very last performance, the one or two last performance, I remember we put in these little bits mm -hmm. of the second act mm -hmm. to just get a taste uh, test right. for all of us. Then we go away for six months. Everybody goes back to work. Um, I remember seeing something. I will let it go unmentioned because I was offered something of an extraordinary nature in between. Uh, to do the uh, death of a salesman that I wanted mm. to do with uh, Dustin Hoffman and I, mm. and uh, and then I saw something else that I will not mention, and I, at that moment I said I have to turn down Death of a Salesman because I have to wait to be in Sunday Great. in the Park because right. this what? must be done. In, in, if the other is going to be done, then this has to I'm be ha done. I'm happy to say <laughs> I'm happy to say for public consumption I'm glad. Well, <laughs> I was I was very glad for the rest of my life, but because uh, this this so informed my life and fed my life. In terms of simple things, the words connect, the words to look to see, the whole sense of the process that I learned from working on it, from our discussions, from uh, you know all, all kinds oh, of things. I, I, I have to interrupt. Yes. This reminds me, Bernadette got a huge laugh at Playwrights Horizons on the pun about need. K-N-E-A-D. And she never got it again here, and, and it bothered her. You, I don't, I don't know if you remember having the conversation with me. I said, but it's not you or the song. It's what perceives it, because the setup of Louis earlier was different than the setup. Oh. And therefore, when you refer to Louis in the song as needy you, it didn't have the sexual connotation that it had in playwrights because of what it preceded that was more about Louis and, his, and the sexuality of Louis. And that's why you could never get the laugh again, because the audience didn't make the connection. Oh. And I watched you every night saying, he <laughs> needs, he needs me, and waiting for the uh, dead silence, oh. and then having to go on. <laughs> Whereas Playwrights Rise has always got a huge laugh. <laughs> this is such a great song, too. Yeah, you know, it I, really I is. wish I this, I'd like to improve this. this song. But there were things at Playwrights that, that I remember, that just, uh, I just want to finish that mm. thought. Oh, with sorry, yeah. with, no, it's all right. That, yeah. uh, I, I need K-N-E-A-D to finish this talk, yeah. <laughs> but, but um, it was amazing. And then we moved to Broadway. We were talking about the people yeah, walking yeah, out yeah. and James' reaction to people. Yeah. Then we moved to Broadway, and we put in this second act that wasn't finished yet. We knew what was coming at the end, but we also knew it just didn't make it. And my experience as an actor was dominoes falling backwards. Mm -hmm. Because at Playwrights, everything worked like gangbusters. Now I knew that I had to go on with this company to start the beginning of the first act, yet I knew that we didn't have it at the end. Mm -hmm. And it crippled yeah. my spirit. Mm -hmm. I don't know about others, but it, I was locked. And all I can, my, when I understood that crippling, is when those two songs came in <laughs> that night. Yeah. And Bernadette and I, I remember, we went in the basement, we learned yeah, them so at the booth they were done theater. With, with I piano. think I went in that night or the next Ber after. Bernadette did Children Art with a Piano. You guys were amazing. I mean, to this day, I've never worked with any 
any actors who were as willing to throw things into a show in front of a thousand uh, people. It Ma was amazing. I think the audience should know that Mandy threw in finishing the hat. I played it for him at four o'clock in the afternoon. He said, I will do it tonight. I said, Mandy, you don't have to do it tonight. He said, I'll do it tonight. Stephen, do, do you know what I have? Mm. Which I, mm. I gave to my sons. Mm. I have the sketch pad that uh, has uh, finishing the hat with, oh, on with, the music, oh my on, God. on the type uh, page uh, inside. The lyrics are on it? Yeah, it's taped on the inside. Yeah. That was that night. Absolutely. I was, I, you know, I, I but, couldn't. But, couldn't believe it. It couldn't was believe. what happened that night when, when, when lesson number eight and mm -hmm. children and art were listening. First of all, we were just you know, let them, let us at them. Well, also the I remember the let us at them. Apart from being apart from being happy, you were adrenalized. I mean, the adrenalized, and I knew that our I knew the black hole was filled. Yeah. And and the whole thing, to my whole remembrance of that experience was all the dominoes just stood up. Yeah. And the whole thing, and it was. It was amazing, amazing. Does, does nobody here remember the first preview and what we had instead of the chroma loom there? The whole art show with the, the two of you on it with a wind machine and standing up on a on a ladder. The first preview. Oh, Broadway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, first right. preview. A wind machine? Or, yeah. And a ladder? Yeah. You don't remember that? There was a little, little unit, a little don't, unit that came in. The whole, the the whole unit came in and you were there with, uh, you were carrying the parasol and Mandy, you don't, neither of you remember well, the wait, It was in for again. one performance because then Richard Nelson and James put their heads together and the next night it was not only out, it was fixed. You want to describe it, James? Well, we should wait till it comes on oh, okay. TV. Oh, okay. We'll wait. Right. Okay. Right. we'll wait till later. Well, but doesn't, doesn't, uh, uh, Look at uh, Judith. Judith. Judith's the makeup. She looks like one of those uh, n late nineteenth century, uh, like a Renoir. Mm. It's all pink. This was, was my audition piece for a sitcom. Yeah, I know, and I've always loved this scene. <laughs> I've always loved this scene. My audition I, piece I, for a sit oh. to get a sitcom. <laughs> Somebody who absolutely adored the show said to me once, except for that low comedy scene with those two Americans. <laughs> I always thought it was terrific. You want to talk about relieving an audience? Yeah. This is like a hand for, for a number. Yeah. It allows the audience to breathe before the next mm -hmm. section or step. It was pretty cheap. I liked it a lot. Also, it's necessary to the plot. Yes, it was. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Here they are, the girls. Yes. This was originally a very long song. Soldiers and girls. Why don't you guys uh, spend a few minutes, just or, or even f five seconds, just saying how, how you uh, would work on these songs? Did you write the words first? Did you write the lyrics? Did you talk uh, about I, it I, wrote, I, I, I always write simultaneously. We, what I like to do a lot is discuss what, what how music will function in something. One of one of a long set of discussions James and I had was I didn't want music to tear the fabric of the show because it, it's quite delicate. And you got to be careful if the numbers are too forceful or mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's wrong for the show right. and uh, mm -hmm. but once that was determined it was very easy not easy to write but easy to know what was right from what's wrong I never ri mind writing a bad song but I can't stand writing a wrong song I wonder whatever would have happened if you had another guy on stage playing the silent soldier Two of them. Well, I thought well, well that, then it would have been. Oh, remember the one on the. It was a song called "The One on the Left," right? In which the four, you know, the, the two girls are arguing which which soldier they want. I just thought this was so brilliant, though. That, that, that didn't end up in the show. The no, one on the left. No, no. 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 But ended up along the way, we did yeah. it, didn't we? Not in. Not was that for it was. Yeah, it was. I, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, it was playwrights. I can't. I don't remember. I don't think soldiers and girls was. Uh, you know what I think. I think the one on the left was playwrights, and then I wrote Soldiers and Girls for Broadway, and we didn't put it in. I think that. Now, have those songs that you cut out for this ever been used in anything no, else? No, no, but I haven't. Have you ever taken any song that you've cut from something and used either the melody or the words? Never until three. In weeks anything ago. else? Never until three weeks ago. And what was yeah. it? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, come no. on! No, no. For the new show. <laughs> How about a ride into For the new show, the I car. used I used something that that, uh, that I wrote for another project that nobody ever. Heard. And it's the first time I did it out of desperation. Will there be people that were involved yes, in the project? There'll be one person, unfortunately. But is he in this room? <laughs> no. <laughs> Good. No, 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 no. Is he alive? No, is he, no, <laughs> but, no. Yeah. Is he vegetable? No, nobody in this room knows. Is he balding and once had a full head of hair? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, otherwise I'd be not. Certainly. Uh, and here's finishing the dog. I always had an amazing experience with this song as an actor. I've since done it over the years. It is probably the most requested song oh, when I do really? my concerts no that kidding. people will shout out from the no audience for me kidding. to do. 
And when I do it in the concerts, I have the experience that I only felt once when I did it in the play, which was the first time I did it in playwrights. I remember that. I remember that. And I cannot tell you why. I did it that night, and it was unleashing in a way that I've never experienced. I always felt that I had let down the song and you you during the show. Even before the performance, it was the rehearsal. When you did it for the first time in the rehearsal at 5 o'clock that afternoon, 5.30, it was a cataclysm. It was a cataclysm. And b- people were sobbing. People had to be wiped up off the stage. People in the cast. And I felt it never happened mm-hmm. again. And I felt no. I just, you know, the, and really? then years later I started doing it in concert. And it it has that same. Really f- does? That, no, the, I mean, I'm not saying people no, are wiped no, no, out. No, no, but no, I, no. I feel connected you, you feel in it. a way. I'll tell you, that happened to me one other time in my life. The song Something's Coming. The first performance in Washington, it stopped the show. And it never even got a mild hand, or never even got a good hand after that. And we did everything. We changed Mm. endings. Larry tried everything. Something happened that first night. When you say it was a cataclysm, what do you mean by that? I just meant meant the reaction after after that very first rehearsal performance of yours, the reaction of the cast, and just sitting around there rehearsing it, was uh, some people were destroyed. I mean, I remember Nancy Opal. Couldn't get, she couldn't rise from the right. stage. She was sitting and she was sobbing and she had to, she had to calm down before she could get up. But one, one of well, the fun things about working on this show is you're writing a show about making art and you're making yeah, art. So that's, it's that's kind true. of like, you know, yep. a kind yep. of... Yep. But yep. you know me well enough, Steve, and, and, uh, and you've seen other actors. Do you feel it was something that uh, no, I, I don't was think trying too no, hard? I, or? No, I don't think it has anything to do with you, you at all. you got to remember one thing. You gotta, you're forgetting one really important thing, which was the, before every performance of Playwrights Horizon, somebody got out and said, this is a workshop, there's new material. And that night they said, and there's a new song going in, right. you know, I may even describe it. And so an audience is primed, waiting for a new song. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, See, it it's doesn't have unique. to do with you. It has to do with the with <laughs> yeah, people I mean, out nothing there. nothing to do with you. And no, no, I t- but I told well, you... Well, that's right, I'm asking. Is it the same you, thing like you were talking about man, need? Man, man you, know, you may not remember, but you were really upset the next day. And, uh, uh, and the next all, day after when? After, after, the, after you felt the first time that it hadn't... That I hadn't, that hit, it hadn't, hadn't hit it again. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, but I remember that's you, were, you, you were really upset and you were blaming yourself. No, but and I kept saying, no, it's got nothing to do with you. Because yeah. I would tell you if I thought you were doing anything. No, but it's also that when you do something and you don't know what you have, yeah. and then the minute you know you have, it's like you're not yeah. a virgin anymore. You know, yeah. It's never going to be the same. When you do it in the concerts, do you do it all the time? Or no, no, only when they shout that out. So yeah. it's a but new experience yet again. It is. They ask for it and I didn't plan it. so fresh. And then I guess what happens is because I'm not playing George anymore, mm. uh-huh. it becomes the definition of, of, the, of, of my life. Thing. That's very interesting. And, and it has yeah. such resonance it for beca- me that it becomes my, uh, yeah, I, I feel becomes, like it's a little anthem I can It becomes see. a paradigm. And I'll tell you some, another thing about it. I hate to talk showbiz, crass talk, but the <laughs> button on that number oh, is yes. not right. If it's two bars shorter, it's too short. And if it's the length it is, it's too long. And three bars doesn't work. And I agonize over whether to do the two bar or the four bar ending and neither of them works and I don't know how to fix it well, to this Do you day. know what I think is the problem? What? I think I think if everything went to black and it was and we left, then it would I, I, I think, think it's a rhythm thing. I think it's a rhythm. There is something about a left shoe dropping at the end of a number and not the right and I it's be, something is wrong with the rhythm of the way that that song resolves itself, you you may be right. Maybe it has to. Maybe a stage effect would would help it. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I know it in my bones. The button is elusive. I have the same trouble with Everybody Loves Louie. The button is wrong, and I don't know how to fix it. We try to do it with a bit of business, as as Bernadette knows, with you mm. know, with, uh, speaking through you, you know, with the, the, the goo in your mouth. Right. But yeah. but there's something. Something's wrong with the button of that number too. Buttons are very hard to find. To make an audience feel satisfied and full and ready for the next course, and, well, it's and such let a themselves. F- it is such a meal that song yeah. that it isn't the kind of thing that one expects to have a hand. You know, it's, it's well, sort of like. How in about a, in the soliloquy in Carousel? That's a meal too, well, and we it gets a, a huge thing. Well, but huge. We, were at a, we were at a wedding the other day, and Catherine said, "When did it start that people start applauding when they kiss?" 
<laughs> when did that start? Was huh. that always the case? And some Jewish, I can't remember in a Jewish wedding, do I ever, does everyone applaud? I know they applaud when they break the glass. That's such a great Talk idea. Talk about wedding, there we are. No. <laughs> Turning my bustle yeah, around and make a pregnancy. It's, 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 it's so brilliant. It's so brilliant. It's so brilliant. Yeah. yeah. James. I was so tickled when I had to do that in rehearsal. I would laugh and laugh. That was brilliant. Speaking of scenes that were cut down, the scene between the two women in this section, uh, it playwrights, uh, when Christine Baranski played the part, and that we won't remember the scene was about twice as long mm -hmm. between the two women, and I just thought it was sensational. I really missed the length of that scene, but everything had to be trimmed down. It looks beautiful, Doesn't James. It, look? yeah. it yeah. looks yeah. damn beautiful. You know, the other thing that we haven't talked about that's so crucial, you guys just had chemistry out mm -hmm. the wazoo. Mm -hmm. I mean, the minute you guys came into a room together and didn't know each other, and you just, I mean, there was, it was palpable. I mean, the show, I've seen the show done by other people, other productions. Mm -hmm. Nothing will ever be like the two of you in the show. And it's also, because it's also because they made it together. That's another thing in the show yeah. is something they made together. Yeah, it's just who you are, too, and the chemistry of who you are coming together. It's just incredible, incredible. And you can still see it here. I mean, even... Mm -hmm. Yeah, even without the sound. Years, a couple of years even after you started, you still had it on stage with each other. These costumes were great. I remember all the fights yeah. about the costumes. How over like what? Who had fights? Well, how over budget we were. You mean for Broadway? Yeah, and going into Jerry and Bernie's office. I think it should be said that this show was uh, cost about half of what the ordinary Broadway show cost. Yeah, Do you remember about approximately about what the figures were? Then it Three million two. Oh, was it even that two. much? Uh, well, I, well the, I think that was. The, I think the official figure was two million eight. Yeah. But I heard it was three million. But anyway, it was. Three million. I didn't even think it was that. And what were the more expensive when shows? Other shows were six. Uh -huh. And they were complaining, six. huh? Yeah. Well, well, one, well, one of the reasons that we were able to keep the cost down is James is great at uh, at finding ways to solve problems mm. like that. We were well, also, though, in the Booth Theater, we right? were in which a was tiny half, theater. half the size of the Booth Theater. the production cost. I'm you know, not I talking would, about but I mean, the return. But, but the return. the production yeah. cost. How much it cost to put on the show, not how much it cost to run the show. Oh, okay. But we were not I mean, we should have gone in a much bigger theater. But yeah. Who knew? I thought the Booth Theater was huge at the time. I just love. Now I go in there and it feels yeah, like you're. It was really tiny. Yeah. Tiny. Yeah. Tiny. This is the scene that I've always, uh, I've loved it in its longer version than Playwrights Horizons. I don't even remember Wonderful. it. Oh, wow, it was a thrilling scene. This is where the other artist is uh, waiting to talk to me right, back there, right? And, and the wives, now, the wife and the mistress. My memory of this, the, the journey with this whole thing, was, in particular, I have a, member of playwright, a memory of playwrights because you were coming, see, if you hadn't seen the show for a while at Playwrights mm -hmm. and you were at home, Right. working and you were coming up on a certain night I thought uh, to basically look at this scene mm. because my memory was that you both were considering musicalizing this scene and that's, uh, that's absolutely true. correct Which that's absolutely true. correct yeah. and, and I was the, so the concerned the two women and the two men and making oh. a quartet oh, yeah, yeah it was going to be musical and my concern was that I was so frustrated 
Well, because an, uh, my songs hadn't, uh, a lot yeah, of my material hadn't been written, sure. that we got to the mother song, which was right before this, I'm pretty sure. Although after. after. You mean after, just right after, right after? Just after Beautiful, yeah. Just after. Just but after. I think of playwrights, it was the other way around. The reason I think that is because I was so upset that I remember letting myself break down in the mother song because I wanted to clean out so I Except could do the, this scene well for you mother, guys the because the you were about the No, the mother scene always preceded her coming and saying, I'm going away, and that always preceded the formation of the painting. I know, but so, I, there was so, some, something that so I got confused. Yeah. Or maybe there was another scene after with it. may them, have been. But, but, uh, but my memory was that uh, mm -hmm. you both decided that yeah. the scene did not need to be musical. And then... No, and then do you remember Bernadette did uh, We Do Not Belong Together? Was that, I did that for Playwrights, yeah. No, that didn't, was that right. Was, what you mean, was it there uh, originally? Yeah, well, in, no. in Playwrights, it, that was, no, it that was the Broadway. It wasn't in Playwrights, no. No, it, it, it wasn't was in, in the Playwrights, Broadway right. Right. Yeah. So there was no song in, in this scene at all then. So it no. ended ended as a scene. That's why I'm sure that's one of the reasons it was it was longer, James, is that, you know, right. that, that there was time for it. I'm so impressed at how beautiful it looks. Yeah, but, you know, it really does. There was a point where there was going to possibly be a film made I know, of this. and you were so right, and I was so wrong. And I, I wanted to do the, the film, and then I, right. I remember feeling... I oh, I don't. Feeling, Come on, uh, we had a film, and we met. And actually, Steve, you wanted to do the video, but I have to say that I was so sick of the show by then, I thought, oh, my God, I'd do a film that's going to take me another oh, year. Oh, right. Now I remember. But now, in <laughs> retrospect, I'm so sorry I didn't do it. Well, I'm sorry we didn't do a film, but I must say, looking at it, I'm not sorry that I did it because I didn't want to do the video originally because I thought, you can't capture on video what you do on stage. One is for one and the other is for the other. Right. Well, and, this, this but, is a pretty good, yeah. pretty good representation. But I didn't want to be the bad guy. And when I look at it, after the fact, I'm glad it's there. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's better than not. Yeah. yeah absolutely. But I really wish we had done a movie. Of course, if we had done a movie, it would have been a completely different absolutely. animal. Yeah. Mm, be able to do and I remember the argument yeah. that I that I felt okay about was it meant that uh, you guys wouldn't have done other work because you would have spent time doing this, and I'm grateful that you went on to do other That's work. One way to look at it. Well, I had to make myself feel good somehow. Uh, <laughs> no, I just do you, do you respond to looking seeing yourself on the screen, Bernadette, or are you able to be completely objective? Do you get embarrassed or do you it get critical? It depends. <laughs> 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 You guys never came to the Because Manny said at the movie, beginning though. of the session, you know, that he just really didn't want to see himself on screen. Now I know he can't take his eyes off him, but that was <laughs> <laughs> an hour ago. He was, an hour ago, he couldn't. Well, that's because the sound's off. So yeah, the sound's okay. off. It, it, sound makes, a it, it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference. It does make a big yeah. difference. Oh, remember that great duet, though, you wrote that piece of music. Remember, Steve, there was a kind of operatic duet that they did at one it, point? Really? That might have been that, a it was at the it? end of We Belong Together. It, it was right was at the end. No, the there was that another was one. Yeah, well, I don't even know that we ever even rehearsed no, it. No, I didn't rehearse it. I don't remember Gee, rehearsing I don't remember. anything. For the, was it for this scene? Yep. And there was a big and it was operatic scene At this of, moment in the scene when she's leaving? <sighs> I don't wow. remember. I believe so. Wow. I, I think and that was at Playwrights, and we never did it. I don't remember why. Probably threw cold water on it, yeah. as you like to say. Yeah. Although I would think that since I was still writing the first act, you would put anything in them. That's true. Too. So that must have been later. Then. Must have been later, and it must have been in between playwrights and. Right. And Broadway. Right. 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 Hmm. 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 Yep, you're right about the chemistry. Oh no, it's extraordinary. It just you just see it in the eyes. There's well, there's the, that moment in the climax of the show when they lean towards each other during mm. Mulan. That mm. It's a killer. Well, it's also because both of you are unbelievably committed to what you do when you work, which is I got to tell you, pretty rare. You know, yeah. there just act. There just aren't that many actors I can think of that I no. work with that just Absolutely. give a hundred percent. You guys gave. A, in fact, when I worked with you, it was the first time I had ever worked with actors. 
who came in a room, and you guys were like 100% from the minute you arrived. You learned your work before you, Mandy, both of you. Mandy knew every single Yeah, time. you got there and you knew yeah. the material before you, you know, I was used to people who coming in kind of holding the script for two weeks. It was amazing working with you guys. Well, you were yeah. also pretty damn patient with my insanity at that time. I will never forget at Playwrights that uh, because I was a little frustrated that my <laughs> material hadn't been written yet, and for my part. I don't think that's uh, the only reason. Uh, but but, uh, but yeah. for my insanity? Or <laughs> what, you you were go, paying You want to go back to my three, un yeah. my three uncles that were married to the three aunts that were si the first cousins? <laughs> you want to go all the way there? But, um, you were but paying me back for making uh, you audition. No, no, no. I remember at one point I just said, that's it, i got to quit. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget, you said, James, just have Catherine come, my wife, and your agent. Right. Please come on this particular night at Playwrights and do your best. Mm -hmm. Let's go out afterwards. And if they agree with you, then go your merry way. Mm -hmm. And they came. I did my best. And we all sat down. And they all just said, you must mm -hmm. stay mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I was so blind at that point, That's I couldn't right. see. I was just. Well, I remember your agent saying to me, and we won't name names, you know, he should just give the painting to the girl at the end of the play. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Excuse me? He said, You know, why doesn't he just give her the painting? You know, it's just like, I'll never forget that. And I just said, oh, uh, I didn't even, it was speechless. I was speechless. Well, that didn't come from me. No. <laughs> no. I was just in. Nondescript panic. But you were very supportive of each other, you guys too. You know, Bernadette was. This is another favorite moment of mine. It's a tiny one. It's the transition from this scene into the mother. Mm. What happens in terms of Probably lighting and the music? Probably see it here. Well, unfortunately, let's well, see. Well, I'm sure the music will be there because what's and, and going the stage on now? Is this just music playing? Just like a dramatic moment. Yeah. Oh yeah. Looky. It's there. It's this. It's, it's art. When he when he changes and he goes oh, yeah. to meet his mother. I forgot and about it's this. The way Mandy changes the attitude and the way she's sitting there. Wow! I completely and forgot I this moment. I just love this transition. Hmm. This is really a great song and theme. Too. Remember, oh, Barbara was so scared of singing. Oh, she, she was wonderful. the first time. First time in rehearsal when she sang it, she was literally trembling. Mm. Literally trembling. So, Steve, I'll tell my side and you tell yours. Right, this. okay. Because uh, this is my favorite, one of my favorites. And the other one, I'll talk later when that moment comes up. But uh, this was at Playwrights, and it was that night that I was frustrated where you were coming. And it was during this scene where you had Barbara had her portion of the song written, and there was nothing for me. I was just sitting there drawing her, and my portion of the song hadn't been written, nor my portion of the duet. Mm. And I was so frustrated that while she sang her song, and then as it was over, I was to sit there while some music just repeated, mm -hmm. and I just let the tears roll out because I wanted to clean myself out so I could then do the rest of the play so you could gotcha. see it to do your work. Yes. After the performance, you said, listen, I'm getting ready to write your part of Beautiful, which is the song between you and your mother, and um, I just uh, want to talk with you, see if you know anything in your head, pick your head or whatever. and. Uh, and the first thing I said was, well, wait a minute, first of all, he should not be weeping in that scene. The reason I was weeping is from frustration. I do not think that that actor should be weeping in that scene. It had nothing to do with it. I was just trying to clean out for what was coming because I wanted to be, you know, show you the work ahead without being nuts. And uh, you said, no, 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 I understand. And then we had a phone call that I remember to be quite a lengthy phone call about... Um, ships passing in the night, missing in the night, about mm. mothers trying to connect with mm. mothers and friends and conversations, thinking you connect, and then five seconds later you feel that mm. the conversation didn't take mm. place. Mm. And three days later, and it was the, one of the most extraordinary conversations mm. about life mm. and meetings, meeting, mm. uh, either successful or missed, mm. that I'd ever had with anyone, male or female. And three days later, you came in with a piece of music and these words and this poetry that to me was uh, the heart of what we were talking about. And it's, it was, and I never had an experience like I'm, that. I'm, I don't remember the conversation. I'm sure it took place. I do know that what I wanted to do in this song was to examine the idea of what is beautiful. Because the more you think about what is beautiful, the more interesting the notion becomes. Because 
people do mistake pretty for beautiful. And I think James's choice of the Eiffel Tower as a sort of center of it is when you really think about it. Look at the Eiffel Tower. That's one of my most favorite things. Mm, it's a gorgeous Tower. thing. It is. It's as beautiful uh, as the painting. Uh, and that's a very odd concept because yeah. people don't think of that. Yeah. I love the lyric, I see towers instead of trees. Yeah. And you, but you know, and I, incidentally, I got that from reading about Surat because he kept, th you know, he said, I'm not a painter, I'm an experimentalist in color, I'm a scientist with mm -hmm. color. He kept claiming, I'm not a painter, I'm not a painter, that's just an object, that's just an object. I thought, all right, if that's the way he says it, feel it, I'll put it in his mouth. This song, I think, embodies one of the blessings and the curses that this show gave my life, or just happened to photograph part of my life while I was there, which is when she says to me at the end, connect, George, connect. Oh. Or when I say, I don't remember who says it to who, but she says connect, or I say connect. And, and it is uh, no, some, sometimes too much, uh, too much George and Mandy. Uh -huh, where it was really? sometimes easier. Did you feel that in the second act, too, when you're standing in front of the painting and, and trying to make the young George alive again? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I feel it uh, oftentimes there are verbal themes. Just, just in my life, just uh, the uh, whole struggle to connect. And I think sometimes it's okay in life maybe if you don't connect. Mm -hmm. You know, if you know, you don't. It's not such a curse if we can't connect. But it, this had such a strong effect in me no, it that it became. It was E.M. Forster saying, "Only connect." Only you know connect. that I. Uh, I'm so you, you know, it's spoiled by tasting the mm -hmm. fruit. You know, one of one of the things I love about this show, and so and it's also something James and I have done in other the other shows we've written is how there are verbal reprises just the way there are musical reprises. Words and phrases in one act show up in another act with another color and context and the audience has that wonderful unconscious connection. <laughs> Speaking of connect. Well the word look, the yeah, word yeah, see, oh, absolutely. the word connect, absolutely. we're all... Well, order, design. Yes. And here's the great failure. Mm. Is that a hard scene to watch? It's hard for me to watch it right now. Is it not? Yeah. Well, it's, I, I play it's, it's Turn because your back. you care yeah. about these people so yeah. much, even though the two of you played them. You know, something's more poignant about sound, too. Look, it is a great comfort to bury yourself and your loved ones and your children, and it is a great comfort to go and bury yourself in your work yep. and run away. Mm -hmm. It is, <laughs> I, I don't know how I'd live out without either one of them. I remember when we were working on this show, certain people hated that this character was so unlikable, which I, of course, never found him unlikable. No, no, <laughs> totally understood where he was coming from, really but wrong. other people just, Likeability, I tell you, I, that's one of those it's words that, that makes me root see for, red. Because yeah. yeah. you know. I try to dress right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, you you often work with actors who don't want to play unlikable people. And I, the oh, two of you are great, because also when we did impromptu, Bernadette, you were willing to go to that place. Yeah. You know, because not everybody is likeable. I love the way Charles moves in this. In this, oh, he <laughs> doesn't know whether to go to the left or the right. One leg is going in one direction, the other, the head is going <laughs> one direction, the hip is going the other. He's completely falling apart. 
Each leg had a mind of its own. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. He's wonderfully awkward. Oh, was it? Very funny. Very funny. I can just see the people watching it saying, why are they laughing? I don't think so. But it is sort of, in some ways, like a musical version of that what was that the thing that Alan Bates was in that movie? Where King of Hearts. King of Hearts. Yeah. <laughs> all right. the loonies. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> but isn't there a lyric in one of the songs? Some all the loonies and yeah, you and me, pal. The Batman sings. We're the loonies. You and, the loonies. you and me, pal. We're the loonies. We're the loonies. Yeah, you and me, pal. We're the loonies. Mm -hmm. This is the moment where my Frank. heart started pounding because I knew that, right in, here, that in about 30 seconds it was going to start. Wasn't there a question? Put, put it Wasn't it there something that there was this whole discussion we had during rehearsal that there was some little object in the back by one of the trees that was like a, was it a, a heater for pretzels? Oh, yeah. It's in the painting, yeah. And what then, was and that? We, 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 asked the, we asked the curators at the, at the museum what it was and there were three curators and simultaneously they each said something different. Yeah, yeah. And we thought, oh, okay. Nobody knows what it is. Some think it's a pram. Some think it was the oh Louis a stove. Louis. Did we say that? I said it too. Yeah. His waffle, His waffle, waffle stove. stove. This is the way the way James managed to bring everybody on for this kerfuffle is master playwriting. And, but it's when it all when he says when he freezes them, I just. Kills me is when he, the boatman finally moves. Mm. The reluctance and the. That James always saw a special relationship between George and the boatman. As a result, Bill and I have been in many productions. That's together, right. For whatever that's worth. That's true. Since. Perry, who plays the boat. Mm -hmm. hmm. There it is. That's what always made me cry. Didn't you write? You wrote this song fairly early on, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Do you remember the order of the songs? I know you started with I, the. I, I, uh, with the uh, in the first the act, I wrote, I, wrote, I wrote pretty much in order. No, but I remember you jumped to this yeah, one. I, yeah, I did. I wanted. I think actually, after Color and Light. Maybe. Actually, do you know? I suddenly remember. Do you know what the first song I wrote was? It's hot up here. Because yeah? when we talked about the second act and I want to have theme and variations, I thought, well, that can be fun. Gee, I don't song. remember you doing that. Yes, sir. The first one I wrote. For the whole show? Mm -hmm. mm, I don't think like so. Well, mm, my memory. My memory. I remember you sitting down. And, this is the first time we worked together, sitting down and doing Bernadette's song. Maybe so. Sitting at the piano, taking those huge breaths to get that all in. See, I think we had talked about it. Don't forget, I didn't do Bernadette's song until you'd written that monologue for her, the right. sketch of it. Hmm. It's Hot Up Here was a notion, as something we had discussed when uh -huh. we talked about the second act, and that's what I think really? I attacked it. That'd be funny. That's it, it's my memory. I remember exactly where I was and what I was doing when I wrote the word forever. Okay, let's hear it. Wait, no, I, I was sitting on the terrace. It's just, what I mean is it was the moment in the writing of the song. I see, yeah. The moment when I got to the word forever. I thought, yeah, that's what it's about. Very sad watching it because oh, please. Um, I um, there'll be four boo-hoos going to these microphones. Um, 
But if you want to talk about chemistry, the final look between Bernadette and Mandy, unequaled. The monkey Not moment. Yet. The monkey, the monkey ribbon when, when, when he when he bids her farewell with his face, with his look. Sexy. The two of them looking at each other. That's some moment. That's some moment. And here comes the master stroke, of course. Did you, did you plan that, James, or did you just suddenly think of that? The glasses. Who remembers? Gosh. When I saw that. Well, it is James's brilliance that comes <laughs> up with oh, things like oh, that. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, we were incredible. doing. Winter's Tale at the Shakespeare Festival. Mm -hmm. And things were going along well, but not working. And James came in one day, told everybody to take off a piece of their clothing, put them all into a trunk, had the clown come out, and slowly mm -hmm. took each piece of the play out of the trunk, and within five minutes, the whole thing. And it, you know, it's another one of those things well, where the dominoes started, all stood up. Yeah, the play started that way. Yeah, then? it wow. was just incredible. Uh, and why was why it sad to watch that? Either. Well, it was sad to me because um, you wished it was I a movie. I haven't been able to have an experience in mm -hmm. theater like this. It's yeah, it's sad to me because of what it is. Because of what it is, I just love it. That's so beautiful. That's because the sound so is much. off. If I heard the music, I'd be more moved. That's Okay, here's the opening of the yeah. second act. Remember, remember uh, Bernadette, you asked me what a gavotte was, and I guess, I, so I gave you a present of a dictionary, and I just saw it. Yeah. Because she was too shy to ask me but what I love a gavotte was. I love the word mystical. <laughs> <laughs> but the, originally, we were going to, the whole drawing. second act was going to be mm -hmm. sort of variations on it. And we were going to have, I don't know if Mandy and Bernadette know that we were going to have a scene Sunny in the Park, but it would be a hundred years later. It would be Central Park outside the Joe Papp, the Shakespeare That's Festival, fun. and you watch all the kids playing, and it was going to be just oh. like the strolling at the end of the first act. Oh. It was going to be what they do today with dogs today and baseball and people waiting online to go to the theater. And why? And what made you? Well, we decided the second act. Uh, the James, I should say, decided I think it was rightly that it needed a storyline. <laughs> that it wasn't. Uh, Call me that crazy. That <laughs> what we would. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the sex symbol. <laughs> <laughs> well, we had like a three-act show. Yeah, for well, a while. we had lots of stuff. Stuff in the museum. Then we had this, this scene where that I mentioned earlier, where uh, Bernadette Wizard was to come back and uh, be cajoled by by uh, George into posing nude. And then we had the, the scene where the painting but arrived. But Bernadette doesn't. Painting, I don't do this. I, I know. That's, <laughs> that's, that's why we didn't do it. And, uh, we didn't have a body. We had a scene where the painting was going to be uh, when it came to America in 1924. It was going to be that, and then the sequence of scenes in the museum. Because you know when it came, uh, also we were into the, the 1958. I think it was when it came to the Museum of Modern Art and mm -hmm. almost and got and burned. To you know, it came almost got what burned out. The almost, building caught fire. That's why fire. it's never allowed out of the Chicago Art. They let it just once, <laughs> and it was a fire. 
in the next room, and 10 minutes later, this painting would have been destroyed. Mm. And the Chicago Art Institute said, okay, never again, never leaves this. So the Chicago Art Institute was No, I don't think so, Steve. I think well, actually the people who lent it, who gave it to the Chicago Art Institute said that they could lend it once. Oh. I oh, think it was oh, the oh, irony so of it. it. Oh. What, how did it come to America? What was that journey? It, it's quite a mysterious. The painting disappeared after he died. I think it was rolled up in somebody's attic, attic or something. And somebody's, I think, over a cafe, and somebody discovered it and, and bought it. it. Uh, James may remember the details. I don't. They sold it. Anyway, some, some, some American uh, rich person uh, Who brought it and then decided to bring it over and give it to the Chicago Art Institute. Hmm. I think it was 1924 to Rogers. Uh, when when did he become? That if, if you got a nickel for every time you say George, you could be a rich. Uh -huh. <laughs> when did he become known? I mean, at the time that that painting was found by this guy mm. and brought over here, was he known then, or was it? Uh, well, was the Art Institute just acquiring things that they felt that somebody? No, well, I think it was acquired when it had already won its notoriety. I mean, afterwards. When, when, when did Surratt became sort of uh, really uh, accepted? Become sort of really. I mean, when did all the impressions sort of well, came the into post their own? In the it's really the post-impressionists. Yeah, that I know that, but I mean, but the impressionists were, uh, I was going to say, the impressionists became well, became sort of accepted in the teens, and this would have been the 20s, I would think. Yeah, I have to go back and look. I think it was on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Well, he had such a short life. Had he lived a normal no, lifespan? We, we, we forgot to talk about something. Before this scene took place, uh, was before before the right after the monologue, the light yeah. monologue, the best piece of writing. Somebody was just Incredible asking me about that. They it's were in there. the playbook. Yeah, I, when I, you get the I, playbook. Guess whose insistence? Good. Because it's Mine. an incredible, incredible it's wonderful. piece. Somebody was just saying, gee, I saw it once when there was this monologue. and yeah. Where did I do it, it when went, we did do it? it? Right before or right after? It went after this. After this, this number. I was going, going to bring it up, too, okay. because right after this number, he comes out, and then the, then And then the remember, the, then they, he spoke, and then each of them, them speak. Reacted. Right. Yes. So now he doesn't... Off and running, that was the key phrase. In it. We, all, we yeah. ended up speaking, but he didn't, didn't speak no, no, anymore. He doesn't show up. No. But it was an amazing piece of writing oh. about And I think we could have just because of uh, uh, the logistics of your getting out of the was that garb the into I the other garb. I don't know. I don't remember. I, I think it was about length. I think you decided it was a beat too many. Yeah, probably. Look Cutting everything good I ever did. <laughs> and that's why it's in the book. Anybody who wants to read it can read in the that's published right. version. Thrilling monologue. I'm gonna go read it. <laughs> I just, I just, I just love this such sequence. Yeah, this so is so peculiar, fun. And unexpected, and so it happened right there. Yeah, and then yeah, they just started to talk. Before, just before, just before all, came all, out, all the characters you came out, reflected you did your on your monologue. Him. You went, and then and then they reflected then on the artist. The, because the speech is very elliptical, to use Bernadette's that's favorite mm -hmm. word, in that it doesn't make absolutely clear his monologue that. That he's dead, or that he died, and then you gradually become aware. Also, I love the underscoring of Michael Bisner. Hmm. I don't even remember this section. This was Michael Starobin's uh, debut. E debut as an orchestrator, and quite yeah, a gift on to Broadway. On Broadway, yeah. Yeah. He'd, he'd been the house orchestrator, playwright. Right. And it was the first time I didn't work with Jonathan Junior since company. Did we ever know what the monkey represented? Could it re represent? It meant loose woman. A hooker. Prostitute, now, where did you get right? that? Yeah. That was that, 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 you know, the painting's full of cartoons, so to speak, because uh, Surratt used all these symbols. That was one. And also the city dog represents something. Spot represents something. But when you say loose woman cartoon, oh, that is, yeah, I mean, what, that what, is what's the, the history that's like, of that? Like, uh, I don't know. It's like a... Well, when, peop when, when they'd stroll in the park, they'd have a monkey to let people know that that's what... Oh, that that was, was a problem. That Hookers had yeah, monkeys? Same with yeah, the fishing. So it's uh, like a sign. Fishing, yeah. Fishing also. It was? Yeah, fishing, yeah. What, what about fishing the fishing? What was it? Also if a woman was Women fishing. would go do that at the park, and that's how guys and, knew that they were available. guys knew that they were available. I see. I look, man, he's thinking. I'm thinking just he's thinking. Have I think ever seen I, anyone with a monkey? I'm done. Well, <laughs> but the thing was, when when I never and did. How could I pass the fishing? Exactly. <laughs> I never did any of the research, so I knew none of this when I wrote it. So 
It's just stuff we found out afterward, the fact. One of the things that apparently about the painting that uh, we read about that I didn't realize is that all the costume, all the, all the clothes in it are, he used to cut out the costumes of the day from the rotogravure sections and things like that. And so there's a lot of satire on the people depending on what yeah. they're wearing. Mm -hmm. The way if you mm -hmm. put somebody today in a painting and wearing spats, it would make a comment about that person. Yeah. Did, did so Louis Lautrec do the same? Was that part I of his ball game too? Gee, I don't know. I just his, think his, his seemed I, to be I, like I, that. I saw the know? movie, but that's all I right. know. <laughs> he was small. He was little. <laughs> <laughs> he had a height problem. Bill Parry doesn't change from year to year. I saw him uh, four months ago. He looks exactly the same now. Ah, just going back to white is so exquisite. Bill, to me, is the epitome of a great musical mm -hmm. stage actor because he's so much an actor mm -hmm. he goes about it as an actor he just is so uh, here comes the problem and, and, and here it is don't now don't you remember being the, on the first preview of the, you were there with a the wind machine and no it's there was what, 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 what are you talking we had about the a wind machine. Where was the, there wasn't was a wind, wind machine? machine there was a scaffolding that we built and you were you guys the three of you the two of you got on top and made the pose it was some but, you know, but there was a wind blowing I swear all right for what purpose it was a scaffold the, well, the, remember it was originally image. a performance art piece when we first did yes. it at playwrights when we first did the first preview in New York it still had a kind of performance art aspect and to I was it. still Marie up there on the scaffold. No, you, you, you know you were Dot. Oh. You were you, no, you weren't Dot. It oh. was actually York, it, it was Mary. It was Mary and oh. Mandy who did it. Or oh. Something. I don't remember. Oh yes, because Bernadette was getting into her old well, garb. Bernadette stayed in old drag. Yeah. It's a nice tie, Mandy. Good hair. Look at your hair. I must say. Oh, can we tie. not talk about the hair? <laughs> Why well, you look great? Yeah. I know it looks great. great then. I'm now I. I need that Propecia oh. pill. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't realize, because I don't think of it. I didn't realize oh. what you're talking about. Now I get yeah, it. That's a little thick curl. Yeah. You look a little like, like Kevin Klein there. There you go. I'm often asked, am I Kevin Klein? People ask me for his wrong Never hair. occurred to me until and I, I just saw that. I give it to him sign it, you know, help it happen. You don't look Kevin like Kevin Klein. Klein <laughs> it you, you know why I'm confused about this idea that you're talking about, guys, about, about the scaffold and everything? is because I thought we went to Brand Farron's place who we designed the we problem did. in the interim period before we did it on Broadway. We, we did, we did. But there was a reason for this and... Uh, and, and, and I bring that up because he made the chrome. Because it was... But we had... We I had don't even think we performed it. I think we did it in tech and it was too complicated. Whatever we oh, were Oh, that could be. And do. Richard... No, that's, that's right. So we cut that's it before. Right. We never even performed that's right, with it. That's right, that's right. I just remember that Richard Nelson, you solved it in the next tour. Because I remember we were in despair because it was necessary for whatever we were doing. Yeah. Yeah, the chrome room still looks kind of yeah, because like kind of postmodern. Nice, yeah. Look, looks like like it George Melia. Absolutely Medier. right. Mm -hmm, yeah. Absolutely. Of course, it'll open up in a showgirl with Steph Harris. Uh. Oh, Bernadette, how did you <laughs> learn to play that? You're you so were brilliant. You were so great. great. Well, just great. I don't know how you, but she, she got the essential quality of that <laughs> age, which is breathlessness. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's what all the actors look like now, Mandy. <laughs> you seen Rent? Everyone has that. <laughs> Boy, if I could have one piece of art, it would be, I would want a, a Korean uh, sketch of you, this. You and me both. That's you and me both. If I had all the money in the world. I, I and saw, get I went to I an apartment of an art dealer, and he had about six of them. No. And I was, and I was alone in the hallway, and I was standing there crying. And oh. I went to the living room, and I thought, if I just tuck it under my coat, yeah, uh -huh. he wouldn't believe I would ever steal such a thing. If he steals something really nice like that, it's okay. <laughs> I forgot when we built this uh, little... That's the that's the that's the one I like. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's at yeah. 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 the Guggenheim. Yeah. That one. Yeah. And didn't you say pretty James? cool? Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Isn't sure that was, tree yeah. still there when you went to Grand Jacques? Just the one tree. Mm, well, we sort of yeah. made it up for the. There was one tree. I don't think it was that. Oh. This is like ti Titanic. So they, they stole my That's idea of the Titanic. It it's exactly what he did. I never thought of that. Yeah, I'm going to sue that guy. I'm going to throw a million my way. Oh, what's so wonderful about Bernadette in the sequence is her look of bafflement. She's going completely <laughs> baffled. <laughs> did you love Bernadette going from that one character to... 
Yeah. Oh, I was scared at first. Remember? Yeah. They said, yeah. no, don't get scared on me now. And I said, all right, I won't. Scared? Uh, what, what, what was it that frightened you? Well, uh, I'm going to play an 85-year-old woman. <laughs> and uh, hello, you know, all of a sudden. And I just... Can I do it? Now, is it uh, the painting on the right, we f that's that's reversed, isn't it? We f uh, that's printed in the reverse way. Right? Right. None of us, yeah, we, the, <laughs> we show this major painting of Surratt's and reversed it <laughs> on the stage, and nobody ever pointed it out. So what year is this shot? Uh, 86. There's the three. Yeah. That's the Les Poseurs. That was going to yeah. be there. That's the poseurs. Well, you lost weight, Bert. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Must be on the zone diet. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm in the zone. And I've never seen your hair that way either. I need a conditioner. <laughs> <laughs> Mandy's tie is kind of elegant too, isn't it? Uh, a studio audience. Yes, I. But, yeah, but no, what's interesting is it, it uh, is as if he were, uh, it, it, oh, it, it fits into the play. Oh, oh my God. Gee, that's so look. funny. Prince that's Valley. hilarious. <laughs> that look. Brent was pretty hilarious, too. In yeah. 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 It's nice you were all game. I mean, this was a pretty yeah. wacky. Pretty game, I'm yeah. absolutely astonishing what Brent and you did with that. It's incredible. It was. I mean, looking at it now, it's very fresh and it's fun. Yeah, it was. I, I remember it like yesterday when we went to Brand's place and he showed us all yeah, the gizmos. I, I remember. Remember putting the lasers in the theater? It was the just theater. great fun. Mm. Mm. Yeah. How well these people do you, 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 uh, What James wanted originally, he said, I know what Surat would be, be doing today. He would be doing a holograph. Hmm. And, but there's no way to make that in the audience unless you have one. The only way it could work at the stage is you have one row of seats. One vertical row of seats, let us say, just one seat behind, because you have to view it straight on. <laughs> plausible, plausible. <laughs> Who says this show isn't? Oh, here comes Charles. James Brent. Yeah. Yeah. What's Brent's character's name? I'm not Dennis. Sure. On Star Trek. Oh, yeah, I have no idea. Dada. Oh, oh this is, uh, this this is Char Charles, Charles Kim Rose. This is how Charles got Murphy Brown. <laughs> <on that one. laughs> I mean, the schmeichling he does in this, I mean, yeah. is so <laughs> that's really <laughs> Look at this. Who smile. is the person that's in real life that Dana looks at? There's... Uh, the performance is that Laurie Anderson? Was that no? She doesn't have no, that kind of hair, I right? I remember. There was somebody that. Uh, yeah, there was somebody who were. Look at Charlie. He, he looks, looks like he weighs he looks. eighty pounds. Yeah, he does look thin, doesn't he? My goodness. And he also looks like. Let's see what the profile is. Who else is in here? Was it fun to play this show? It was hard, right? It was very vocally hard, this show. It was an emotional wipeout for me. It was emotional. That's the thing about it. It's an emotional yeah. wipeout. I, I, my my m amazing experience I had, because in going through it and the whole emotional ride of it all the time, it was three years after we finished the production, and someone was doing a piece for the New York Times about Bernadette, and they asked to speak to me. They wanted to interview me. And I said, sure. And I'd never heard the record. I'd never heard the album that we made uh, since we made it. And so I was driving around in the country, and I put it on in the car to um, play it just to bring back my mind and see what it triggered. And I had to pull the car over because I just started weeping profusely. Because I remember at the time I would be a, a little like George. I mean, I was into the part, and I'd complain too often, et cetera. But in general, I remembered, you know, just it was exhausting me. And when mm. I pulled over in the car that day, I remembered thinking, we just do not appreciate what we have until I it's had, gone. You'll be astonished. Now I had virtually the same reaction. I rarely listen to shows of my own after they've been recorded. But I, I had I, when I got a, uh, a CD player for my car, I put it in, and I had the same. I started to weep. I thought, I 
thought, am I, I'm not missing it? I thought, no, I really like it. Yeah. It's really moving. Mm. Well, but I think our job in doing it, A, is very different. Uh, we, we have a very different task. And, um, and also, it's, a, it's an extraordinary album to listen to because it tells the story. Yeah. And, and I just... It's good album. It was a great lesson, you know. I mean, this show was, it, it was my college, my army, mm -hmm. it was my boot camp, it was, it was a place where <laughs> well I learned. Well, it was, it was seminal for a lot of people. It was, I learned an awful show. lot about how I lived the rest of my and life. And Bernadette, you hadn't been on Broadway for a while before you came back to do this, right? Right. How I long was that? A long time. Um, really? I guess the last one was On the Town. Oh, that revival, it, yeah. And so this was like a... 12 years later, or? Gosh, look how well the, uh, the yeah, it really it, looks, it looks very, I don't remember the tape looking this good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another thing, too. When the first tape first came out, I remember I felt so critical of it and yeah. everything. When I look at it now, and I yeah. think, God, it's here. Yeah. It's amazing. I don't get all this, you know, why, yeah. you know, why I didn't thank God then. <laughs> Cocktail music, yeah. Paul Foy playing the yeah. cocktail piano. <laughs> <laughs> the modern clothes were quite terrific. Too. Yeah, really, yeah, it was great. Yeah. And they're fun, funny. Girls knew what they did. Yeah, yeah they were really that wig. good. <laughs> Judith with a wig and him and his chest hair showing him. <laughs> you remember when we did it at um, Playwrights, there were two women, yes, right? Yes, it was indeed. It was Carmen Matthews, and she had a dog attached to her her body. Oh, God. That he's a picky eater. <laughs> she came on with a dog. Remember, Carmen Matthews had a dog <laughs> attached to her. A little plastered right onto her body. He's a picky eater. <laughs> this is a fun number. Mm -hmm. This is a number where, on, on the, uh, as you'll see, there's, there's, he never knows where there's a cheat at the end of it because of the way the problem with shooting. Yes, we did something. Well, I, I can't remember, remember you'll, exactly you'll see it. what. He looks like Teddy Roosevelt. Mm. Bill, yeah. Bill looks like Teddy yeah, Roosevelt. He sure and does. Of course, and he's got a voice like Teddy Roosevelt, too. He, you know, he should do Ars Nicole Why, is there a Teddy oh, Roosevelt yeah, yeah, part yeah, in it? The, the, crazy, oh, yeah. the crazy brother yeah. thinks he's Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah. Oh. And he's always charging up the staircase, start saying, charge up the hill. Oh, my bowling shirt. Yeah, I was going to say. The bowling shirt with my hometown on it. That was your, co you, you contributed to that, right, Mandy? I had a bowling shirt, and the costume, James liked that one, so I have a whole collection of them, and so Wardrobe duplicated it and put James's hometown on it. Oh, they haven't worn out yet, those bowling shirts? I gave them to my boys. Oh. I gave them to the kids. Maybe I'll start wearing them again. Start a style. Actually, looks pretty good with the tux. Yep. Mm. Well. Anything, <laughs> anything to help with tux. Taking pictures. It's so large. Okay. You had on before with a yeah, red the way tie. She, the way she says large. She I had large. I had a different shirt on with the red tie. Large. But I don't remember the jacket or not. <laughs> the face of a the fundraiser. Face of, face of a fundraiser. The monkey with the cup. Yeah. yeah. The formalism hasn't changed. <laughs> Didn't I have that same hair in Into the Woods? <laughs> Judith's condescending attitude towards the old lady. <laughs> Got 
You see, James, what's about to happen here is why I think the soldier was so brilliant to have his cutout friend. Oh in yeah, the first act. Nice. It right. just yeah, it just was the of putting it together. Just so wonderful. And there it is. Oh, oh, you oh, know, yeah. it just Yeah. God I remember the different ways of making these things time yeah. right. Yeah. I mean this is where I'm talking it's about things that are work. unconscious. James, do you think you consciously thought it as you were thinking of it, oh that'll match or that or that Oh the cutouts? Yeah. Oh I'm, definitely. You did. That was oh, a conscious yeah. one. Well, it was just about trying to... No, I mean, to I know a conscious thought of a cutout, that, but that how they would echo each other and everything. Well, it's just, I thought whatever the second act had to have references from the first, so that's right. all. I don't know what... Uh, yeah, most people don't don't realize that this entire sequence is a replay of the day off. Yeah, it's a different whole. freeze, right. Remember, there was that freeze that uh, Seurat yeah, had based his painting on that looked more like this freeze thing. that we're going to make here, yeah. Also, what did you tell me, Steve, that after I'd done this thing for I don't know how many performances... Yeah, I said this to Mandy. No, you know, we, I, I just casually said to Mandy, it was it was when it was the party to celebrate your 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 last performance, and I said, you know, I made some remark about you know, putting it together and finishing the half being the same tune, and Mandy looked at me, startled. Yeah. It was. A, 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 yeah. yeah. He had sung it for two years or a year and a half. I had and no had, idea. And hadn't consciously. I I didn't realize. Wait, that. say that again. I wasn't the putting it together and and uh, finishing the half the same tune. Mm -hmm. Putting it together. Finishing the hat. Now you have to finish the hat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Charlie. Charlie. Laughs Charlie. These guys were great. Yeah. <laughs> God, we were very lucky to. You know, we had a great cast. This <laughs> was some lucky time in our life. staging on four feet. Yeah, I know. I was just thinking that. But well but done. Yeah, I remember Mandy when, when you were blocking this, and Mandy had kind of had to slither around people without falling in the pit. Yeah. Well, it was actually a very small cast when you look at it. Yeah, yeah. It was about 15 people, that's all. I'm surprised we did that much. Oh, I forgot about the, uh, what's, the what's the guy's name who played the... Uh, Frank Kopik. Kopik, thank you. Yeah. Kopik, right. Frank Kopik. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, he was there at the reunion. Yeah. Uh, Kurt, that's Kurt right. um, Knudsen. That's right. Very Gosh. good, James. Mm -hmm. Good, good point. I used to make fun say in real life say when I was putting it together, it's going to be number one on the hit list. I right? know, isn't that hilarious? And the hilarity is that next to Comedy Tonight and Tony and Buzz and um, uh, and Saturday Night Crime, putting it together has been recorded more than anything else. It's first by wild. Uh, the whole Streisand thing. There was your version at the Academy Awards. It's been used as a commercial by Tom yeah. IBM. Oh, that's right. Xerox. And, oh, oh, Xerox. Xerox, excuse me, Xerox. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Yeah. It is wild. Well, it's catchy, Steve. Yeah, right. <laughs> Who yeah, said right. they can't hum your stuff? Yeah. yeah. the way it's shot, but look how thin all the men look. Yeah, well. Are we looking at a, is this possible? No, they were thin. Slightly distorted I don't know, but it sure is driving <laughs> me nuts. <laughs> no, but, no, but yeah, it isn't about thinness, it's about elongation. They're all vaguely Well, he, oh, the camera Westenberg angles. Westenberg looks a four, a six foot three. The oh, well, all right, all right, me and I'm okay, okay, well, uh, I'm I, just I, sure. I wanted to say six foot six, but uh, because uh, 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 Charlie Kimbrough also looks so tall. Mm. Even I look tall. And, yeah. and you're in the wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Those were a lot of lyrics, man. Oh, man. man. Yeah. Mandy's hands. <laughs> That's why I didn't hear the Mandy's music. Hands. I was wondering. Never wanted to bring it up while you were doing What's it. What's that? All those lyrics. All those lyrics, yeah. You can horror it. You know what can horror means? No. It's a Jewish expression. You shouldn't say it, you know. I thought I didn't yeah. know your voice. Mm. 
this was Barbara's right tour de force. Oh, yes, oh, yes, right. When she pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> She's also one of those people who has no problem being unpleasant on the stage. No, she, she loves it. She just didn't play as shrew as anything else. Yeah, I love that about her. Anyway. She looks pretty, and she also yeah, she looks cla like one of those classes, like yeah. a coin or a queen of England. She looks like Elizabeth. She looks like that. Looks like very, very elegant, huh? Extra fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. You made a part of the character. It's okay. I know what it was. It's a funny idea. It's really a funny idea. Doesn't get hit. <laughs> 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 so funny. That's so funny. You know whose tuxedo that is that I'm wearing? Your father's? No. That was given to me by Ted Chapin, Good who grief. is the grandson of Theodore Steinway Chapin, who invented the Steinway piano, and that oh. was one of Theodore Steinway Chapin's tuxedos. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, and I and that is exactly oh. who's I'm wearing. Yeah, his mother's Betty Steinway. That's right. Was Betty Steinway. Really? Yeah. It's like in a burst of anger. Woo, yeah, I, I thought it would say, take it easy, Betty. <laughs> 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 You're going to hurt yeah. yourself. Now watch this. There's a cheat. Oh, this is the like cheat, like right. Cheat, like yeah. It worked fine. Yeah. Why was there a cheat in there? We put freezes and we didn't have footage to cover musically somewhere there, so what oh. we did is freeze frame yeah. some things. I forgot about that. <laughs> I think Judith liked her wig. Uh, Judith would just always had a good time. <laughs> She is a good time girl. She was there for the whole run of the show, I believe. I love Bernadette's look at that lady. She, uh, she looks at her. <laughs> what are you up to, lady? <laughs> the frost. That's Louie's waffle stove. Mm -hmm. Waffle stove. <laughs> I study everything about this painting. I don't remember the mention of waffle, waffle stove. <laughs> Who's got the I book? Who took the book? Gee, that's a good you question. Oh, you mean the prop? Yeah. Oh, boy. I, my guess is it went away of all props. Literally, I was up in the uh, garage cleaning stuff out, and I found my old roll of all all the drawings that I pulled, you know? Mm. And Catherine said, I'm taking these and I'm gonna have them leather bound in a book. She's oh, absolutely right. right. Well, as I told you, I have one that she gave me. I bet, bet she gave it to some other humans to cast too. Oh, I have one. I still have my, the, the casket, one of the gifts that Cass gave me when I left was, I have it right, it's been my office every single day of my life. That's it's this giant, giant yeah. paintbrush that says, I'm using a different brush stroke <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> on it, painted in yellow on it. The one thing I'm sorry we don't see a lot of is Bernadette's feet in this whole sequence. Yeah. Those stockings and the way and the way you positioned your legs is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. But the secret of what you did is the breathlessness. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Holy time. But people, yeah, most dodgy. actors playing old do doddering. They don't understand that what is old is, is about breathlessness, mm -hmm. about everything requires such energy, energy to do. Energy, the energy is so low, yeah. Oh, there in the feet. Here comes our little drama scene. Mm -hmm. yeah, we wrote that about 500 it. times, didn't we?
can't see a hairdo like that anymore. Mm. Mm. Oh, great. Yeah. Very sort of almost Louise Brooksy. Mm-hmm. Very. Yeah, like that's not a wig, is it? No, that's her hair. Yeah. So. I believe that's her hair. Maybe it is. No, it's got to be a, a Maybe hair. Maybe that's a little piece that's in the from the middle of her head down. No, I think that's actually her hair. Oh. God, it's amazing. Your face there. Look at it is amazing. Change. Did you put makeup on? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 but you did for the video, but He's you didn't. Did you do it in the show as well? Uh, do you remember? I think I must have. I remember I we brought a makeup twice. person in for the video. But it really is about your body language and expression more than it is your face. Oh, there's the waffle thing right behind them. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. I was looking further in the that's distance. It. No, that's that's it. It. Even the way you sang the song, you took all the energy out of your voice, so it had that quality. Took all the low. Did you go down to Washington to see the production down there? Do you remember? Not Eric Schaefer's? No. no. He did your show? Yeah. He's done it twice. He did it at the Signature Theater, and then they did it. Uh, he did a joint production with um, the Arena Stage uh, just this last season. Oh, yes. Lots of music. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do? You didn't use makeup when we did the play, or just for the video? I could yeah. just for the video. Because how can you get it off mistaken. fast enough for the... Well, you have a little wow. time before you come back. Yeah, right? You have time? Yeah, it's a, it's a good five minutes, six minutes. Get out the wet ones? <laughs> George. Those shoes. Those shoes are definitely <laughs> of their era. They look like bowling shoes. They are work. They really work for actors. You know, they really yeah. are. I think they're easier for an actor because at least you have the music to support you in a way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, no matter what goes wrong, like we were in the middle of putting understudies on, whatever, that music is, it's a heartbeat. is the pulse. It's yeah, a pulse. The, it's a that helps lift you. And Paul Gemignani was always so great at, you know, elevating the show. And but also, if you're a little lost, the music dictates the right. mood. It, 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 yeah. it, it takes you into the, that one. Yes. Well, in a play, when you go off, you veer off, it's really hard oh, to You're right. You've got to make your own music. Yeah. You have to yank the other people along with the tune. How many pieces were in this orchestra, Steve? Do you remember? Oh. I thought you were going to say 14. There may be 14. I'm trying to remember. I don't remember. But the miracle of the orchestration is how full it sounds with what a small contingent of instruments it is. The sign of a master orchestrator. I remember Jonathan Tooney said after hearing the orchestrations, he did, Michael did exactly what Jonathan had done, which is use a few instruments here and a few instruments there so that when you finally use all of them it sounds like the biggest <laughs> symphony orchestra. Uh, yeah. It's called saving it for when it counts. So did he orchestrate for like the song Sunday and then work backwards from I there? have no idea how he did it but my guess is he was conscious that he was going to need it for something. Uh huh. That's my guess. Right. How much did you discuss your desires in terms of the orchestration? I, I rarely, I rarely, well, with uh, uh, Jonathan or Michael, uh, discuss anything specific. I don't say this sounds like a cello to me or something, like that. but I describe the music in general terms. In, in general musical terms or no imagery? general general imagery. Imagery. I remember saying to Jonathan uh, on the occasion of Little Night Music that I wanted the orchestra to sound like perfume was rising out of the pit. Mm-hmm. You know, and the first to which he said, "Oh, you mean all strings." 
<laughs> yeah, that's called a professional. <laughs> the first time I saw someone do that was uh, when we were at Juilliard and, uh, on the third floor, and we'd be in between classes. We'd take our sweats and go down to the end of the hall, and Leonard Bernstein would be conducting the Juilliard mm -hmm. Orchestra. We got to lay there, and I'll never forget, they played a piece, I don't remember what the piece was, and it sounded beautiful, and then he gave a long speech about, no, 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 no. we're in a forest. Yeah. And he started telling the story, and then they played it again. Mm. And it yeah. just was sure. extraordinary. Sure. Um, I remember when uh, I, uh, Michael Bennett said, working with a new orchestrator, he said, and this is Michael Starbin's first job on Broadway, he said, I suggest you have a reading of a, an, orchestration, an orchestration or two a month before you go in rehearsal, just to, to avoid any problems. And I sort of didn't know what he was talking about. And sure enough, when the first orchestration came in, I don't remember what it was, and we played it just to, f to hear it, it was overly busy. It was what? Overly busy. Yes. In other words, he didn't trust what I'd written on the piano. He yeah. decorated it. And it was less and less is more. Because I write very thick and c complex piano music. But he was used to orchestrating things that required him to thicken and decorate. Embellish, yeah. Embellish. I love the moment when Mandy poses for the picture. He does like look like a real mirror, doesn't he? Sorry, Manny, what? No, no, no. Just, this is really, all he's got to laugh is Manny. <laughs> 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 Why is that? I guess it's just it's, so it's it's sort, of, he, it's no, sort of pathetic. It, it's what everybody it, does. It's, it's self-consciousness. <laughs> it's everybody's self-conscious when they're asked to pose for a picture. Yeah. Yeah. Mandy caught it all in one body movement. Have your kids ever seen this, Manny? The tape of the show? I don't know. Wow, that would be interesting. Because, you know, when I met you, Seeing what Daddy, you didn't say, the first time we met you were holding uh, oh, I, I, You, you Isaac brought in Isaac in and, uh, into the rehearsal and put him on the floor in a blanket. Yeah, he was six months old about when we started. And See, even his face looks elongated to me. Well, uh, it might be. Uh, it must be camera angle stuff like that. Maybe the maybe the camera video machine we're looking at or something. Mm -hmm. There's a red book. And it's Whatever it is, I'd like to take it home with me. <laughs> <laughs> Get that DP here. Yeah. This is a great, great set. set huh? This is a great song coming up. Well, all came from the printer. Why would, boy, once you get a notion like that, it virtually writes itself. But it took a while to get there. It's hard, though. You know, last time I watched this thing, you go, what a self pitying guy. Were we self pitying in the 80s? I but don't it, remember. Who are you referring to? No, no, I mean, no, no, I mean, no. George. No. You're George? Oh. This George is so self pitying. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. Okay. Well, don't we you should, think? I just want to point out once thing. again since it's been some time since I talked <laughs> about it earlier, that yeah. it, this song and the one right before it, when we started wow. on Broadway, these two songs did not exist. Right. Children uh, Will Listen and Let's Never... Which came in last? Children Will Listen Children and Art. Art. Children and Art. Children, children and Art. Well, who listened? I know, that's that's Bernadette into keeps the singing woods. songs about children all the time. That's right. Well, well Children Will Listen is from... Into, into the, the Woods. And the, the next show is going to be Children Will, show. will Listen to Art. Children Will Listen Art. Art and Children Will Listen. To Art. Goldberg. <laughs> well, the notion of the book is Sorry, that link ladder has been that link ladder. connection with the past. You see, yeah, I remember putting this in on a Saturday night, children and art. Remember with a piano. Yeah, with a piano. Fantastic. Exactly. 
I think Mandy's was orchestrated, but I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. I and I remember was Bernadette's it. wasn't orchestrated until the first night the critics came. Right. right, exactly. And I think Michael did that because he knew that would be a, a fairly simple orchestration because it's a very simple piano copy. But boy, oh boy, those two songs. I'll never but forget how I felt. It just was like, uh, you know, but I'll you know tell one you, it's of those not like just cartoon versions of a tree with the roots growing all it's, of a it's, sudden? It's not, just, it's not just the song. It's the end of the song and Bernadette's entrance and the bell tree in the orchestra and it's absolute mm -hmm. magic and you are thrust back 100 years in a stroke. Boy, remember us rehearsing uh, Move On one night after a preview? We must have been like 11.30 at night on a dark stage. Don't tell equity, I'm not sure. No, I know. And you guys were great. You said, no, we want to do it, we want to do it, we want to do it. It wasn't working. I'll never forget that night. I thought, yeah. tomorrow, there's no way they're going to remember Would this you tomorrow. Were you restaging it? Yeah, we what restaged it. And boy, you didn't come in the next night and nail it. I remember the first time we did move on at, uh, at Michael Bennett's studio in the rehearsal room. Yeah. I just saw that whole room just went like, mm. whoa, man. I don't this remember is good that. Stuff. I also just have to quickly say, just to backtrack for a minute, I'll never forget when we went across the street. What was the name of the bar? Steve, uh, across from Playwrights Oh, Rising West, uh, uh, West, West Bank, Bank. West Bank Cafe. We went down in the basement mm -hmm. where they have a little cabaret. And uh, you weren't there, James, because you'd heard it before, but Steve was playing it for James. Well, James Gianni was rehearsing. You James were rehearsing was rehearsing. And street. James said, you guys go over with Paul Gemiani and let Steve play for you. And and my, you know. But this is what And what I loved most about you, that? Steve, you know, the great famous Stephen Sondheim. There you were. You played this song, which people now think is like your most amazing thing. And by the time it was over, Stephen's shirt was completely sopping it, wet. It wasn't, just it wasn't just nerves. It was very hot. It was July. It was hot. but Mid-July, and there was no air conditioning. I don't think it was... I, I, won't I know say it had nerves. something to do with it. I won't say nerves no. as much as I felt... I felt more than nerves yeah. that it so mattered yeah, well. to you. And it was very moving. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Gemignani was there in tears. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I was there I remember you know, going like, okay, i got to do uh, this. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes I, that was the whole thing. Mandy didn't even give a chance to... Uh, didn't give himself even a chance to react. So I finished, hit the final chord, and then he said, okay, we'll put in a knife. I mean, Paul Gemignani is <laughs> picking himself off the floor, and you just went right, you, you want to get right. Yeah, it was like a, like, a, like a starving man with a meal. It reminds me of just one other thing that happened when we were on Broadway before these two songs, were not, not move on, but before um, uh, children, will, children in Art and uh, Lesson Number Eight were written, it is the photograph that I have on my wall of the three of us, James oh, and, really? and uh, you, Steve, and myself. And it was that night when I was frustrated, and you were frustrated, and you were home trying to get it, and we were all drunk. And I remember I just, in, 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 in far too aggressive a fashion, I said, please, Stephen, uh, uh, write me anything, yeah, even I, if it's horrible. I remember. Write me anything. What? I don't care. What? And you said, uh, and you sort of just started and just said, I, you said sort of nothing, but in nothing you were trying to say, I will, I it will come. And it was at that moment that I learned for the rest of my life, mm. I will, the work will come when it can come. Well, it's well, these uh, saying to me all the time, you want it Tuesday or do you want it good? <laughs> well, it, but it was Sometimes. a great, it was, it, was, it, was, it was one of the main lessons of my life. I didn't understand it until they came in that night. And all I remembered was the, was the, the, the witnessing of the concern you had in your face it's, at that time. I have a reputation for being late with songs, but one of the reasons is what I said earlier is it's awful to spend a couple of weeks writing a song that's wrong, and I don't want to attack them until I knew I, I didn't want to attack these two songs because I knew they had to be connected. That's why they both came in at the same time. But I had to make the connection with the end of one scene and the beginning of the next scene. And Bernadette, you were always so, you were always calm. Yes, both. Did, were you able? Were you ever not calm at home? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah? Really? Well, when I had to learn Sunday in the Park with George, I was like, I'll never learn this. I don't know what I'm doing. And really? Like, oh, yeah. And then um, once I got past that hump, yeah. then everything yeah, that's, seemed easy. That was the, no, that was the most complicated thing you had to sing in the show. This, I used to wait for this moment every night because it was a very emotional show. Because yeah. we went to such real emotional things that the characters went yeah. through. And this part of the show, for me, was the healing mm -hmm. part, the meditating part. And putting the show the together was thing. emotional. Remember remember when you came in, Steve, I had the whole cast come in because everyone was so discouraged. Yeah, yeah. And, and CCN James said, please come in because everybody's discouraged and just tell them. And I did, and I said, I will get it done, and I always have, and I'm sorry. Well, it wasn't about that. It was also just because the audience response, and you were talking about West Side Story, oh, you went oh, to oh, Washington, yeah, oh, and people oh, yeah, were... Oh, oh, yes, sir. You know, yes. <laughs> Stephen. At the time, though, do my you entire, think at the time you would have? My entire career is about walkouts. Do you think at the time you could have articulated 
that I, I couldn't do because I knew both songs had to be tied together. I, no, I, 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 oh, I could have. You could have at that oh, sure, time. But, that's I, the but, that, but that's, a, that's not a way to, to, to encourage people to think that you're going to get it done. Yeah, I just, um, uh, and uh, no, I, that's right. It was about coming in and saying about people walking out and, you know, oh, second night of West Side Story. I remember my first experience with that. It is discouraging to be on a stage and see people walk out. See empty seats with. I remember once you guys came out for bows and there was hardly anybody there. The part of it was what Michael Bennett had said. He says, you know, be careful. They're going to sell all those previews to groups. Mm -hmm. And this was not a group show. Yeah. This is not for the benefit for. Uh, nope. Yeah. Michael was very helpful to us. Yeah, he was a good speaker. Because spirit. what he did was he didn't he didn't talk at all about what the show was about or about its philosophy. He said, have Bernadette turn up stage on the last note. Have Mandy start with the spotlight on his left. He had very left little left. to say. He didn't even have that Absolutely. much to and, say. And he went right for and J and James said, you may not remember saying, that's what we need. That's what I wanted to hear. That's what no, James he said. Didn't want to hear people come say, oh, you made a song. statement about art, or I don't understand the character of George. That's not what he Do wanted. Do you remember the other thing he did, Burnett? He said to have Burnett come back with a suitcase when she's going to leave, so we all know that she's going to leave. We did that in one one performance. Performance. Of, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> but he was very Mike, supportive. Michael was not infallible, but he was very but supportive. He was, he, but the point was, he was specific. He liked the show a lot. Yeah, he did. And as a matter of fact, he's very responsible for it being on Broadway. He's the one who told the Schuberts to put it on. Yeah. Because Bernie Jacobs absolutely trusted anything Michael said, and Michael saw it and said, "Do this." Because it would have takes a lot of courage to put a show like this on Broadway. I used to love coming to the matinee and I guess they go to the, the little showing too. I just said it took place in the park. It's just it's perfect. Yes, sir, right. The Sunday matinee at 3 o'clock and the, mm. the place in the park and then mm. have this lovely experience and then you could have the rest of the day. And oh, can't yeah. stand it. Oh, look at that. That's the number nine. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, he had a song with a, a horn in the mm. beginning of the show. Right. Oh. Singing that song. Remember, we had the we had the horn at Playwrights Rise, and we had, it only played about six notes. It was but it was you know the the, the drums That's and the keyboard right. yeah. and the horn player. You came, was there for one purpose only. Was it Ronsell? Was it the mm -hmm. Oh boy! There yes, absolutely. Go. No. Well, he's done all our shows. This sequence, James. Oh. Gosh, all we're doing is cavelling about our own show. This is so wonderful on the DVD. <laughs> oh, aren't we wonderful? Isn't that fabulous? Oh, you're fabulous. Oh, I'm fabulous. Oh, you're fabulous. It's terrific. Oh, I've never done anything that changed my life. Yet. I, I cried all the way home. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're switching to Channel 4. You know. But we mean this song. Yeah, I know. Well, this sequence took a long time to reach, James. Look, I'm hard James, James tried many, many, many. Versions of this, yes, James. In fact, we I'm one sure of, one I of the did. few unpleasant moments we ever had with each other. Was, really? Yeah, I, have to, I reminded you of it. Like you would stage, uh, stage something, and told me to come over to Playwrights to see it. Yeah. And it was, I think, it was when Mandy picked up the uh, the ease, uh, the uh, sketch off the floor. Remember, there was a sequence where they they dropped the uh, score. The artist ease, uh, the artist's uh, um, uh, palette or the sketch pad. Sketch pad was dropped, and Mandy picked it up, so the mantle was was passed on, so to speak. And I came in and I, I said, oh, I don't understand that. What is that about? I made some dismissive remark. And James just threw it, stopped, stopped the, that staging of it. And I realized I'd killed an idea in the bud. Mm -hmm. That's what was bad. You kill her. I don't even remember it. But are you sure of it? Probably it was good that you said it. He picked up the pad and it all turned out great the way it ends. But well, it was hard to figure out this ending. Yep. Yikes. I'm it seems so natural and inevitable now. I don't know. It's a little. Well, it's hard. Crazy. You bring in a couple things. You take them out. Bring in this. You do. <laughs> <laughs> no, to convey all that oh, information that this, that this that this guy is renewed by going but back there. We had this without the set stuff, but this was in the very first script James gave to me at the first meeting we ever had at my apartment. James. Really? That last scene was there. Really? In the very first, in the first well, act, in this together? last scene where we came back together, and people came back. 
mm. and that was mm. I or I remember then that I, I thought that was amazing. It must have been without the book, so there must have been something else. That yeah, right. Because there was no red book then. No, no, it was not a red book, yeah, but, but it was but, a connection. Of but some the sort. family coming back. Yeah, but, oh, the ah, you mean the, the old, painting the whole, coming back? Not just dot the whole. Was thing. in that first. That was about all that was there from the second act. <coughs> it was all you needed, mm. and it was just a question of how to get there, how to the get everybody there. Beginning, the middle, there. and the end. Harmony. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that sums it up. Well, Mandy, that sums it up exactly. Ah, oh, that's the moment. Oh, that's where you used to lose it all the time, Mandy. I'm losing it now. That's where, <laughs> that's where I lost it. Seeing it after all these years and being this moved and seeing it silent, it's a show so filled with love. And then he doesn't quite realize until now. It is a love story. It's more than that. It's the love of the people who are doing it and the people who wrote it for it. It's also a show and the people taught so many of us how to live our lives. Mm -hmm. Move on. Mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's a very nice communication. <laughs> <laughs> so I just sing it, and then it's like, oh, it's on, and on for years and years and years for me. Years and years and years and years. That was my lesson I learned over time. Mm -hmm. And then a day to go on it. <laughs> Great image. Sure is. And it's beautiful, too, the whole thing. Gosh, even the lighting is wonderful. Mm. Not even. Just a little. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you have it. 